Okay. Well, I appreciate everybody being here. Uh, thank you. Uh, Chris said he wasn't sure if he's was going to be able to make it. He probably couldn't. He was able to make it. So that's why he's uh, shown up here out of nowhere, but I'm super mm -hmm. happy to have him. Uh, so I'm going to have everybody introduce themselves. And uh, at the end of your introduction, if you can just kind of give like a baseline take, we don't have to have discussion on it. I want to move quickly. <clears throat> Do you think jealousy is like a positive or a negative for a person? experiencing it uh, or the people around them and then we'll just go to the next person we're gonna start with wait wait Brittany wait Simon. are we gonna define it first um <clears throat> sure if you want we can define the difference between uh jealousy and envy um do you want to do that would that be good oh i mean i can do it if you'd like from my understanding right um jealousy is like the fear of losing something and envy is the wanting something else someone has so uh, when I think about jealousy, hi, I'm Brittany. When I think about jealousy, I think of um, a really natural occurrence in human life that occurs for a slew of reasons, so no judgment, but it's definitely something that we want to have a better relationship with. I think jealousy is a sign of some sort of like dysfunction, um, could come from childhood trauma, could come from a misunderstanding and miscommunication, but it's not something that makes you a bad person. Usually though, if you, um, kind of wallow in it, it can make you do things that you would be shocked you would do. So I do recommend having a more healthy relationship with it than a negative one, because sometimes that fear of like, I'm going to lose something can cause us to do things that just isn't healthy. You know what I mean? But jealousy itself is a very normal emotion. So I think that's the part that I want to make sure is really clear. Okay. Uh, thank you, Brittany. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to go next to Reservoir. Hey, uh, Reservoir All Platforms. Uh, jealousy is a good emotion. Um, I think that it's just generally a good emotion that a lot of times can go a little hog wild, as most emotions tend to do. So uh, I think that as long as you're not going ahead and obsessing over an ex and her new boyfriend while you grind an ex, uh, covered in oils in the dark of the night for hours upon hours, then, you know, like, yeah, that's probably bad jealousy, you know? Because I do think that, just to say that, like, reducing it to just envy being a dis uh, displaced part of jealousy, I don't think really works that well. Uh, I think that that is, like, hand in hand. I think that jealousy turns bad when it turns into resentment. Uh, and I think resentment is a form of jealousy. And uh, I think that we should avoid resentment, but a healthy jealousy allows us to go ahead and give a, a care to, about the bonds that we have with other individuals and ultimately enforces our empathy and our desire to continue to have those individuals in our lives. Okay. Thank you very much, Resmir. Stardust. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, I was not like fully aware of like the difference between jealousy and envy. I think most people use it interchangeably. Um, but I will say like for a while, you know, I'm not somebody who gets jealous very easily. Um, uh, and for, for a while, um, you know, I was also very uncomfortable with ever being jealous or envious. Um, and, uh, this was probably when I was younger, but, um, you know, uh, I, I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm not like a very naturally like jealous person, but when I do feel it, it's definitely one of the most, like one of the, one of the emotions that I just don't like. And I would rather walk away from a situation than have, um, I, I guess like have jealousy like at, in that situation. Um, but I think, you know, overall, like, yeah, it's normal. It's a normal, um, emotion um uh you know it's it, as long as you know how to deal with it and know how to like work through it um and obviously like i'm not the best example of that but you know at, at the same time i don't really get jealous very often so yeah thank you stardust chris mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm Chris. I go by Chris Speaks Everywhere. Chris is spelled K-R-Y-S. I think generally speaking, jealousy can come from two places. One of them is insecurity. The other is just being like your regular human emotion. You want less of that first one. You want that second one kept under control. The stronger and healthier you build yourself up as an individual, the less insecure you're going to be on average. So if you do feel jealousy quite a lot in your everyday life, you should probably try and think about why that is. And yeah, that's it. Thank you very much, Chris. Smith, lay it on me. Uh, I think that jealousy is one of the most trigger, like you're, you're more, you're, you're very likely to have a hair trigger with jealousy. It's very irrational, but it is there to protect you. So it's a fear that we have to protect ourselves, but it's usually dangerous and we can, we can, uh, like lose sight of what we really, we can lose sight of reality. Like 
uh, I've been talking about cheating a lot and people just are unable to have a nuanced conversation about cheating because I see it as something complicated um, that could be a lot of different things. Everybody's like, it's, it's you're an evil person if you cheat. You deserve horrible things to happen to you. You're, you're, your partner needs to go around to all your future partners and warn them if that you're a cheater. And I'm just like, no, like, it's it's complicated. Um, you're not seeing things realistically, and I think that's what jealousy is. Thank you, Smith. Tom Foolery. Uh, it's uh, nice yeah. to stream with you again. Uh, please introduce yeah. yourself and uh, let us know. Yeah, so I'm Tom Foolery. Mostly stream on YouTube, but I have uh, streams on a bunch of other platforms sometimes as well. Uh, I agree with Brittany's distinction between uh, envy and Jealousy, I think that jealousy is an insecurity almost always, and I think insecurities are pretty natural. I don't think that there's necessarily anything wrong with them, um, but it's. I think any sort of insecurity that you have is, uh, it can either be good or bad just based on what it is that you do with it. The feeling or the emotion in and of itself, let me rephrase that. The, the feeling or emotion in and of itself is never good or bad, but what you do with it is what matters. And if you're incapable of controlling your jealousy or reacting to it in a positive way, then it's going to be a bad thing and something that you need to work on. But I think that we both encourage people to be jealous and we uh like socially want people to be jealous to exist within monogamous relationships while also um i think we uh stigmatize men more than anybody else probably for being jealous because it comes along with like possessiveness and things like that so yeah okay thank you everybody uh i'm gonna bring up the first topic and i just kind of want to uh explain why the, this is the topic and uh, why I've asked you guys to do a panel on this. I don't really understand strong jealousy. Uh, I see it all the time. It seems like people have like uh, a reaction that's like akin to like a near fatal car crash or like a nuclear bomb going off. I get like a bee sting. Uh, if I feel jealous, I can talk about it and then let it go and then it's fine. But it seems like I nobody I know engages with it like that and it's really weird to me. And so the first topic uh, that I have is... Uh, Every, everybody's seen videos where a woman gets cheated on or like a man sees someone hitting on their girlfriend and they react in a way that um, we would almost always say this is unacceptable behavior in any other circumstance. But if you read the comments of the videos or people that are like watching these videos, they're so for the person reacting in that way. Um, and I don't know if this is uh, how most people feel or if this is a really small group of people that um, just happen to find these videos. Do you think that society encourages people to behave uh, what, what I at least would uh, consider uh, to be like overly strong to their jealous feelings? Uh, or do you think that society does a good job of like stifling this kind of behavior? And is it good or bad that we react the way that we do? Just clarify, are you asking specifically about cases where, like you said, it happens in a bar, your girl's being hit on, so like you batter the fuck out of the guy who's doing it? Or are you asking about like these kinds of videos that you will see pop up on Facebook or TikTok on YouTube where like a guy is like, the, the wedding's happening and it turns out that the his wife cheated on him, so he ends up like putting on a projector with the video in front of like the entire family and friends. Like what, what kind of level so of response are we talking about? Like are we doing the strategic or are we going barbarian route? So I, I'm just saying that I think that um, both of those examples that you just gave are what I would think to be really extreme. To, if it was not something that was attributed to jealousy, most people would almost always condemn these actions. So these are just examples. You can bring up your own examples if you want of just people behaving in a way that we would normally condemn, but is generally seen as permissible uh, well, because they're jealous. What, what about the first one was condemnable? What was the first example you gave? Chris? Oh, yeah, just just battering the fuck out of someone in a bar who's hitting oh, your battering. girlfriend. Oh, yeah, that's that's not defensive. That's not defensible. But, like, you could confront them. You could have a conversation. That'd be perfectly reasonable. Yeah, well, the, the reason why I've asked for a clarifier specifically is because I, so, like, I am a, I used to be a way more jealous person than I am right now, but generally speaking, I don't know of many people who would justify someone assaulting someone else over, like, feelings of jealousy. Like, generally speaking, I feel like even the more jealous people go, like, oh, mate, you, you might want to chill on that one. Um, sure. I, I guess let me clarify it this way. Um, there's, uh, somebody that, uh, my wife knows who did something out of jealousy and, uh, 
the, the, uh, it, uh, it has now resulted in a police report being filed. And when she told me how everybody that knew this person that did it was like, oh, you know, maybe you shouldn't have done that. You should really chill out. I said, is that because they thought the action was too extreme or they were concerned about the consequences that sh this person might face because they did this and like they might go to jail? And it was like everybody was just concerned about the consequences. They didn't really care about the extreme behavior. But well, no, I feel like nobody. Yeah, it's going to be I different think... for each each group. It's going to be different for each group. But what I, I would say is that in general, when people have this like empathy for people who um, who experience like infidelity online or or and they act crazy, generally it's it's more empathy than it is like them endorsing the action. I think it, at least in I, I, I don't know from what I've seen, I think most people would say like, you know, it's probably not a good idea to hit somebody, but we understand why it happened. Um <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, I, I would also like, um, you know, th this is a good question that we're on, but I think it would be really interesting later to also talk about like competition versus jealousy, because that that could be a really good topic, too. So, well, I, th be, I think um, you've moved into a different emotion here, because when you're talking about the people catharsis. that are watching, I would it's say like, it's cathartic hate, you know, yeah. like. Oh, me, no, maybe it is because I because, don't really experience it that much. You well, know, you, so, yeah. Cheating is like is something where like when you see someone's cheated and then someone does something in revenge, especially if it's nonviolent, if it's really sick and like publicly humiliation and, stuff, and people are like, oh, yeah, that's they didn't do violence. So it's it's OK. Um, I love it. They want to see this person get hurt as long as it doesn't cross that line where you can say, oh, no, no, this person's actually doing something that they should go to jail for. People want to see people they hate get hurt and people hate people that cheat. Yeah, I will say that there, you know, obviously, like, I don't think it, it's okay for anybody to get physical with anybody under any circumstance unless it's like self defense. But like, for sure, when we see somebody do something like super savage that isn't violent um, and isn't like a, a direct like breaking of law or something, generally like yeah you know it feels good to see somebody kind of get what they deserve i guess so what, what but they don't deserve it uh, well what would the not breaking of law type be because like i'm trying to think of one that's bad okay like, I've, i have some examples because i've been posting about this exact thing okay so so like like uh like chris had the example of like the wedding where like he has the video of her and then he puts it on the projector in front of their like whole family and an another example is uh this guy finds out his girlfriend's cheating wait, while they're wait, wait, on a can like, we stop can we stop at the wedding one what do you mean i have no idea what well, that okay what is the video of? They're, yeah, they're what is the, the, can we can we yeah, it's probably that one's probably fake that one's probably what, fake is but it it's the still one where like there's the groom people puts still on like a video of her cheating or something like that yeah exactly yeah not, like yeah. instead of okay, instead of the vows this, like, like does that play into jealousy or does that play into resentment because I think that goes beyond jealousy. That's Whatever resentment. that is, it's absolutely like killing you know behavior, think, okay? It is, but... I really, I actually do think Rezzy has a very good point here. Because you don't really get to the point, or I don't think an average person gets to the point of, like, doing something that savage unless you know they have determined that it's it's not even jealousy at this point it, it this relationship is over and i resent this person for ruining my fucking life right yeah so, it's the destruction yeah. of bonds well, like within society yeah. when we look at people yeah. that are going ahead and causing this you know uh, infrastructural harm to like individuals of society we're going to say oh this person now deserves that i, I don't think yeah. it's so much to deal with je jealousy it's catharsis it's like people yeah, like get off like, seeing ukraine well, blow the fuck like out of karma, Russia right shit. like I know but you that's say the that, viewer. that I know yeah, yeah I know that you're know. saying that like I know that you're saying like oh to, you know they don't deserve it and you know but like to the average person viewing something like that it feels like karma it feels like come up right. right why do they not deserve um, it just just so just because it's because like I'm very much on the side of the fence here where I think that they do deserve it like a hundred percent dude if you've shattered someone's belief in humanity to like, like through through cheating on them then like yeah someone showing that video of cheating like I, I understand how it like ventures into revenge porn category and in general like I, I understand that aspect of it the, the problematic side but like at the same time like look if you cheat, you're like a genuine piece of shit. I mean, there might be reasons for why you did it. I'm not denying that. And like, whatever nuance is present, I was gonna get into it something might explain so much more it. interesting. Yeah, but it doesn't excuse any of it. We're gonna be stuck here.
I, yeah, I, no, I, no, it doesn't excuse it. Hold on, we, we can't get into something more interesting when you guys are acting like there's that doesn't that there's no justification for somebody like holding their ground. We're talking about people being territorial yeah. in these areas. I've, if I have a friend or somebody who knows me and my girlfriend, they know that that is my girlfriend, and they try to encroach on my girlfriend in some way, try to kiss her, try to like hold her hand, something like that. I'm gonna punch that motherfucker in the face. I don't give a fuck, and I'll do it again. Like I, I'll do it over and over if these people are going to keep fucking with me hell yes i'm going to go punch them hey i i don't know where you guys are getting this from like no 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 no, no uh like no punishments okay. for people doing really fucked up shit over and over but you're not no, a, you're I'm not the punishing punch you. if you were if you the were punisher. the president that's where they, that's if you where were they got it wrong that's where they got it if wrong. you were the that's president of the united states because they didn't think i was the punisher right that's why they kissed my girlfriend yeah, but i don't <laughs> yeah but like Wait, all, the only person girlfriend? The only person I, I that I think should respect you as the Punisher is you. I don't respect you as a Punisher. You're not yeah. my Punisher. Okay, stop. Wait, okay, Tom. So the laptop. Laptop. Here's the thing. Did they I, I'm force sorry. themselves on your girlfriend? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. If somebody forces themselves on another individual, totally cool to punch them. That's All right? Defense. I hate to He's say it. Like, yeah, it's defending. Yeah. 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 Resi, uh, say, uh, in response to Okay, what after Chris start, I'd really like to hear oh, Brittany. Sorry. She's making a lot of faces. Go ahead, start, finish up. I, I got to see what all these faces are about. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I was just going to say, like, you know, these are two different two different situations. Like, what Tom is talking about, you know, seems completely reasonable. And also what Chris is talking about also seems reasonable because, um, uh, you know, fuck, I forgot what I was going to say about Chris's thing, um, but it was important. It's just that I was right I and based, yeah. Well, it's it's no, okay. No, it it's it's the usual it was, response. No, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. It was, um, yeah, I don't remember. Forget it. Move on. <laughs> so. We can come back to you. Uh, Brittany, what's, yeah. what are all these uh, strong reactions you're having? Um, well, I think my chat and I both are a little confused on what's going on now. Uh, we escalated, right? Like, when I think of jealousy, I think about maybe let's just start off with, like, a couple who's <clears throat> like, hey, you're hanging out with your girlfriends a little, like, much. And then, I don't know, we're escalating to violence, right? Like, jealousy can start off with just someone spending more time with somebody else other than you, right? How does that make you feel? Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Should you put boundaries down? Should you say, I want you to spend less time with other people? What if your partner is spending more time with their sibling? Is that okay? Are you going to be possessive over their time? Um, I really feel like violence is almost like never the answer. And I kind of feel like that comes from like an example of insecurity where I know men often feel a need to like react this way and it makes them feel really good. And I think that's fine that it makes you feel good. But I think like, I, I don't understand the escalation need. Um, because, like, this is just normal. This is, will happen in life. People will flirt with your girlfriend. Your girlfriend's hot, right? So that's just how life's going to go. Uh, escalating to violence seems kind of weird. You should just go home and, like, fuck each other and be like, yeah, he wanted you, but I get you. You know, make it a fantasy, you know, yeah, instead of being point, violent. We're, we're talking about at this point, because I, I, like, I prefaced it by talking about people who actually know that this is your girlfriend, people who actually know that you're together. They know this ahead of time and then go ahead and do it anyways, right? So in this case, like, you're... Um, you are being territorial. So like territorialism is a type of uh, jealousy, right? Where you feel like your, your territory is like being encroached on or something like that. This is, uh, I think that when they're talking about the fact that like, yeah, you, you should never be punishing somebody who is uh, doing this. I'm giving examples of where I think, yes, it's perfectly fine to, uh, to be punishing people who are encroaching on your territory and being like disrespectful in these ways. I think that we have to have some sort of social boundaries and social punishments for people who don't know how to act in these scenarios. But um, Tom? So wait, you're talking about punishing the person that like, so your girlfriend like kisses some other guy, you punish him. But what about her? Do you punish he her? Well, no, her as well, no, no, okay? no, no, Why do you think that Tom went full Heisenberg with the hair? Okay, we're going ooga booga in here. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't what I was talking about. I was talking about like, yes, obviously, if your girlfriend's kissing somebody else, like you should just not be with that chick. But I'm talking about somebody else who's like hitting on your girlfriend, who's trying to get with your girlfriend. Those are the people that I'm talking about. Uh, Tom, that's Tom, you said something really interesting. About. When you br originally brought it up, you said if he's going to do that to me, I thought that mm -hmm. was really interesting. And I didn't hear anybody uh, address that. So somebody kissing your girlfriend is is uh, act wrong done to you, not mm -hmm. to her. Can you can you explain that a little bit to so we can better understand where you're coming from? Your yeah, I, obviously there's a pragmatic view to this. The, like, obviously you're uh, you're going to be affected by somebody else encroaching on your relationship, right? Somebody else trying to split you and your girlfriend up. 
obviously you're going to be affected by that, right? So I like one of the examples I gave is like somebody that you know, somebody that's your friend that is actually coming over and hitting on your girlfriend, trying to like uh, put his arm around her, trying to kiss her, like those sorts of things, right? Not saying that she's kissing him back or anything, but that he's like, he's making moves on her. This is the example that I gave. Yes, obviously, I think in these scenarios, he's doing something to you and her and that, uh, and that, yeah, these are like things that, generally should have some sort of so uh, she's cool with you if she doesn't kiss back right yeah of course like yeah okay, she's cool. saying like yeah i didn't want him this to do dude's this like doing like a light sexual like assault and like you kind of interject yourself in the situation so that's yeah. different than like jealousy pushing, though because ish. so so if, yeah. if it's if if, if, she, if he's stopping like someone from doing a sexual assault i'm not um, even then, saying stopping. yeah but like some I'm dude coming tentative. up on his like ex-girlfriend I'm not even right? that's stop. resentment right if it's like mm -hmm. you the girl's with a new person right and then some dude comes up that's like a previous if your like, girlfriend's current, with another guy that's freaking weird for you to go like try to get revenge over the fact that she's with somebody else and you're yeah. just upset about it yeah, yeah that's, that's but that's resentment that's where jealousy goes bad like you know it's like that's like i think a defining line where i think you're having this different one where you're kind of it's i guess like you have like a level of possessiveness where you're trying to go ahead and assert dominion over the things that you have and like to have those as like what it is that is around you and whatnot. Um, I don't think you're really like speaking to people that don't necessarily have that possessiveness um, to begin with. Some people are like just open to that. I guess that's like, I think, I think that they, a lot of people are a lot more okay with that than they would think. Well, look, well, I it, think it it's only about makes respect. Sense as... um, go ahead, Smith. Go ahead. It only makes sense as jealousy if you think that you're going to lose your girlfriend because of this action. Not even. No, again, it, like just it, a part, uh, an aspect of jealousy is just somebody else encroaching on your territory. Like that is another aspect of jealousy. It doesn't necessarily have to be that you're afraid of losing something. It could be that somebody's just attempting to take something, right? You may not be afraid that you're going to lose it whatsoever. It's the attempt of, uh, that they're going to take it in the first place. You're just going to just go to my earring the shit out of it, basically. Like, just going ahead and making the preemptive strike and then using that as an example to further shoes that would try to encroach on your territory effectively. It's like the other thing. It's about sending a message, Tom. Well, I feel like if, if we can... Yeah. So here's kind of... What, what we're talking about right now, though, is, is a slightly different type of jealousy, right? Because it seems like everything that we've spoken about is something that we kind of like, I can see where your reaction's coming from. I can see why you would at least feel the way you do. But like usually at like micro level, you usually have jealousies in the relationship that don't really make sense, right? Because they come from like your own insecurity or your own issues that you have. It's so like, I remember ages, fucking ages ago, before I moved in with my partner, before the relationship was as it is right now, we used to be in a long distance relationship. And like, I had plenty of fucking insecurities to go around so like when she'd go out for instance without telling me that she's going out i would feel insecure because she's going out without telling me so like that isn't healthy there isn't a justification for it it's not like she was going out and like meeting with all the fucking guys under the like under the sun it was just the fact that like she was doing something out with other people that i didn't know about and like all of the you know fucked up thoughts started running rampant yeah, I mean, this is why I started off by saying that it, jealousy in and of itself isn't necessarily a negative thing, right? It's not necessarily a negative trait. It's about how you react to it. Sometimes, like, people are just jealous. They're jealous beings. And lots of people enjoy jealousy in a relationship even. Like, they want their partner to want to be with them. They want their partner to care about things. They want their partner to react a certain way to things to make them feel like they're loved, to see that some sign that they're... Um, that they're like afraid of losing them. Like there are aspects of jealousy that aren't necessarily bad, but there are tons of aspects of jealousy that are bad or, or tons of ways that you react to jealousy that can be bad. You can be the most jealous person in the world, but not react to it in a negative way to where it's not affecting other people around you. I don't know if that's possible. I don't, I don't know if you can be that jealous and then not have that somehow feed into your behavior or your actions or what you say. I, I don't think it's possible to feel that type of an emotion and then just be like, chill with it afterwards, you know, like nothing ever happened. I just, I don't think that's possible. If it, if it is, it's not healthy. No, I just, just I, I don't think you, it's you, possible. Honestly, I think that honestly, if you, if, if, if you feel that way, you should, you should actually probably express it in some way. Cause that you, I don't think it's healthy to, if you really feel that strongly to just completely completely hide that completely yeah, you can just express hey this made me jealous it's okay that you did it like whatever yep. like that's fine it's like people are that's 
super normal. I, I don't, I think that that's super normal. I've had that happen several times. And eventually, yeah, you just get over it. You express your emotions with a partner and it kind of walks away. It doesn't yeah. become resentment. Now if that partner's like going ahead and hanging out with somebody all the time and getting more and more involved with them, then yeah, like eventually you're gonna get that like negative stress jealousy, but that's ultimately like the breakdown of communications, right? And that's mm -hmm. like any negative emotion that's gonna have a negative, uh, like negative impact because emotions are always gonna have impact on everything we do. We are un inherently emotional beings. So when it comes to this, yeah, you just talk it out and yeah, that's kind of what having a partner's for is talking about like these minor negative emotions, I think. And yeah, that's and what I'm it, asking people here to do is to separate the emotion from the reaction to the emotion. Well, I would say like, and if you're experiencing jealousy to such a point where it's kind of like all consuming, that's where therapy comes in, right? That's a mental health problem at some point, right? Just like if an, any emotion, yeah, any emotion gets kind of ugly. But I will say, like, I'm surprised we went, again, so fast into, like, the violence conversation. Like, what would you guys do if your partner was spending more time with other people? How would you talk about your desire to see them more? Would you, Like, how would you even bring it up to them? Because that's what I think actually is happening in most people's lives is that people are going out with their friends. They're not communicating. They're wondering where they're at. And they're maybe not even jealous so much as, like, hey, I want more of your time. But, like, can we balance it out? And then that leads to jealousy if it's not answered. Like, there, there's just so much common jealousy in people's relationships before we get to the possible punching <laughs> well again i only brought up the punching part just to say that they were making like blanket statements to yeah. say some things are never okay and i'm trying to give examples to where like there are extremes to where i think yeah. some of these you things it's not okay yeah i'm pretty no, anti-violence but if yeah but if, if we can sit on that like there is it's not like i don't, I don't think anyone in here doesn't understand why Tom's mind or somebody else's mind might have gone here, right? Like this is like sure. a classic thing that happens in a relationship. It's a dude in movies gets all the jealous. Time. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, movies is one thing, right? But like, it, like I've I've got examples of this from like my real life friendship groups. A dude gets jealous. He starts like festering up these feelings in his fucking head. He has no way to talk to his partner that he knows how to do in a way in a way that doesn't make him feel emasculated. And then he just comes out and starts swinging. Yeah, yeah. It's that's kind of monkey really brain, though, right? About. Like but lowest we're common talking denominator. About, like, yeah, we're more so talking about justified ways of reacting, not ways that you can empathize with. Like you can keep saying, well, I understand why somebody would feel that way. That's great. We're talking about whether or not the reaction is actually justified. But I mean, Brittany keeps trying to like pull it back. I am I only brought that aspect up just to say that we're kind of making blanket statements that I don't think actually apply as blanketly as they're being said. But if, yeah, if we can actually like get to parts where we're escalating this a little bit more slowly to mm -hmm. kind of uh, have conversations about separation of the emotion and how we react to it and what healthy ways are to react to these things i think i think it was be, uh, was it you tom who said it oh go ahead go ahead and start us sorry yeah to to be fair to elder drazi though elder drazi was bringing up situations where people act out of their jealousy and people were saying um you know that oh this person you know like they were justifying it right or and the only reason they were like against it was because of uh, legal reasons but um, so, so, you know, that is kind of like what the aim of it is, right? Like, uh, yeah, there's like healthy jealousy and where you don't act on it and you, you, you know, you keep your shit together and you, and you don't, um, act like a lunatic, but you know, there are times where, um, uh, and, and, you know, this goes into what Rezzy was saying. I think Rezzy made a very good point, you know, at a certain point, it's not jealousy anymore. Uh, you know, this person, it, you know, you can't be jealous now. It's just resentment right? This person like fuck things up for you. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I, I think, mm -hmm. you know, obviously like these uh, things like, you know, being jealous when your girlfriend goes out at night and, and doesn't tell you like, that's a normal thing that those are things that most couples, you know, are, are going to deal with at some point. Um, but yeah, there is, there is something to, to be asked about like whether, um, society, Kind of like reinforces and justifies uh, uh, mass like uh, lunatic actions because of jealousy, right? So. Yeah, I think some people. I don't know who said it earlier, but that some people mistake, and I would call it dysfunctional. Again, dysfunction meaning not working in a healthy way. Functional meaning working in a healthy way. That's my definition. But I feel like it is dysfunctional to use jealous passion as a plus in a relationship, like. I love it when I'm you're jealous and like you're possessive and like you yeah it's hot in bed 
and I love it in a vampire it novel. Necessarily have to be <laughs> possessive though, does it? Everyone. Like you can be jealous and be afraid of losing your partner. It could be that they want you to be afraid of losing them, or that they think that you're not afraid of losing them, and that they could just go off and be with somebody else, and you wouldn't care, and you would just move on to somebody else. There are aspects of jealousy that I think are perfectly healthy within a relationship. Well, so like, yeah, that that thing that you just said, Brittany, the possessiveness and like wanting your partner to be jealous. Uh, that's actually a topic that um is on my list uh if and fe feel free to say what you were uh, about to say but i also want to move us back after that to my overall question which was do you think society encourages the some of the worst behaviors that people exhibit in response to their jealousy or are we doing our appropriate uh responsibility to let people know like hey that's not a good enough reason to do this i'm yeah, gonna be I honest think with it you does, they do, we do go ahead go ahead smith what I, th I think, sorry. But I think what Tom, what Tom, I think we do encourage it because I don't, I don't even think what Tom is talking about is jealousy. Because I think it's just a, a simulacrum of jealousy. Because if it's at the point where you actually are not insecure about losing your partner, <gasps> you just, you just are like are being territorial, and you just need to like punish people for trying to get with her, even though you don't feel like you could ever lose her because of that. It's not actually jealousy. That's just like. Um, like hate or something or like it's it's some like abstract justification for violence that's not connected to an insecurity yeah again I, from what i understand and all the research that i did on this being territorial uh, of like your own possessions is a aspect of jealousy not necessarily that you're afraid of losing it but that you're being defensive you, because you don't you have want to. to lose that thing and so it's still the it's still an aspect of jealousy you're saying i don't think this thing is bad so i don't want to call it jealousy and that's kind of my point is that i don't think jealousy is necessarily bad okay depending on the culture you come from because i don't know who society is right like i was raised in a culture that does not encourage jealousy or envy like they're religious people right like that's not part of humility so you don't want to be jealous or envious and it kind of helped my siblings and I, like we compete pretty well with other people. We never want what other people have We're pretty good at just doing it. I actually have gotten feedback from my partners <clears throat> that they're upset that I'm not jealous because they're like in the beginning stages of a relationship, just want to make sure that I'm really into them. So I just, you know, I really sm like, I just really smother them with love every day to make sure they know. Well, he knows it's one person, but I am, um, I don't know what the tool of jealousy is except an insecurity, which is fine. But to me, insecurities need to be tackled. So there's no healthy insecurity. There's only a normal insecurity because emotions are normal. But for me, insecurity would make me less efficient as a person. So I would work on tackling those things. So Tom, I just want clarification. Are you saying that the insecurity of jealousy is healthy because it's normal or because it's something like where, where's the healthy part? It's healthy because it's actually beneficial to society. So like things mm. that are like monogamous relationships are beneficial to society. I don't think if people aren't jealous that they're necessarily going to be in monogamous relationships as often. So I do think society encourages people to be jealous. And I think it, uh, society encourages people to be within monogamous relationships, be defensive of those relationships, be territorial over those relationships. And that like, yes, society uh, kind of encourages people to be jealous in these ways. For sure. Yeah, I think society definitely encourages it, and I'm not sure that it's benefited them based off of the statistics of feeling lonely and divorce rates, and I'm not sure we're doing too well with it. But again, in my religious bubble, you don't become jealous, you become faithful, you become honorable, you have dignity in the relationship. So if you have a normal emotion like jealousy, you just talk about it renegotiate boundaries and then move for something that's more healthy but i don't want relationships to stay I together feel, because they're jealous or insecure i feel like you just mentioned an aspect of jealousy that is perfectly healthy and normal i don't but you keep saying because it's insecurity that it's not healthy and normal and i'm saying you like there are tons of aspects of jealousy that are healthy and normal and that don't necessarily have to be dealt with in a way that we're like you have to get rid of the insecurity but instead you deal with what is making you insecure you have a, a conversation with the person that is uh, that is causing this to happen to you, and hopefully the two of you can deal with it in a healthy manner. That doesn't mean that the jealousy was a bad thing. It just means that the jealousy made you guys move on to a better part in your relationship. Well, you're kind of saying it's a bad thing by fixing it. 
no, no, the feeling is not bad though. You're I agree changing, with you. Yeah, yeah. the feeling you're isn't the it's... other person so that they do not make you feel that way anymore. But feeling that way isn't the bad thing, and that's kind of the part that I, I like when you say it's an insecurity, therefore, like it's bad. I'm saying I don't think the insecurity is bad because hopefully it'll bring you guys to like a healthier relationship in the end. Yeah, I definitely think there's a way. Well, first, you could be having the emotion unreasonably too jealousy like not all emotions are reasonable right so i just want to make sure that there are some people like there's insecure and insecure jealousy some people have relationships with that right and so i want to make sure that when we're having a realistic like hey i think i'm a little jealous that i'm not getting more of your time is that okay if i have more of it versus and you're going to fix it so it's an insecurity you're fixing i would cut it i would call it fixing but it's okay to have it and then there's the I don't even want you to talk to your mom. You talk to your mom too much. I noticed that you talk to your mom like what, every Sunday. And I want Sundays to be my day, even though I get every other day. I need I need Sunday too. That's that's the unhealthy jealousy, right? It's like, what do you need my time that much for, you know? But is that the jealousy or is that the way you're reacting to the emotion? Like, I again, I feel like you can have the emotion and feel like you want that attention without necessarily saying, I need you to stop talking to your mom. Well, I don't know. Because if you go to therapy for anger right? The anger is the thing you're working on, not just your reaction to the anger. So you would also work on not being angry just because this thing happened. So I would say you would work on not being jealous just because a thing happened. Like, I don't want someone jealous every time I talk to my mom. Like, you need to get rid of that. That's crazy. You need to be a person who says, like, I think the jealousy can, it's not a useful, efficient tool in a long-term healthy situation if I'm thinking about it the way I'm thinking about it. I've in the example that you brought up with anger, you're not only working on the anger, you're working on impulsivity issues to where yes, you're able to correct. use healthy uh, uh, processes to deal with the anger in the future. Not that the anger is just going to go away, but that you're going to find healthy ways of dealing with it instead of being impulsive on those uh, uh, emotions. And so right, I, right. that's what I'm talking about with jealousy as well, is I think that you can have the emotion, have the feeling, deal with it in a healthy way. And that's mm. why I keep asking, like, I feel like we need to separate, like just having the emotion and it being good or bad to like just the way that we're reacting to those emotions and whether well, or not uh, those are good or bad. Just like with anger or, or uh, with jealousy. Okay, eventually, let's say, okay, let's say I am very jealous. I'm like, Tom, we've been dating and I feel like you give your mom way too much time. And as much as I like your mom, I'd really like more of your time. And I'm really jealous about it. But I get that feeling every single time you talk to your mom, even if it's within reason. Eventually, that is something I should work on because I shouldn't be feeling it at all if I fix the problem. It's a detriment um, to you. It right. makes your life worse. Yeah. Okay. Wait, there's there's a difference here. Like there there, I think that Tom is right. There is a time when. The jealousy, I, I, I'm, I, I see it as stemming from an insecurity. I'm seeing, like, there are times when it's good to be insecure because you're right. So maybe you're in a relationship and you actually are correct that the, this person's mom is trying to turn them actively against you. And, you, and that's, like, actually something that's happening. But that's an unhealthy situation. Like... Like it, we we should be in relationships that that don't put us in situations where we actually have to be insecure about the relationship. I mean, it will come up naturally sometimes, though, right? Because we're humans, right? So, like, you're yeah. not saying that. Okay, you're saying we should work through it, right? Well, like, I'm just saying, like, if if you experience like extreme jealousy and insecurity, that's always justified. Like, like, er like any little thing could destroy this relationship it's so fragile um like that that unhealthy situation you need to be in a situation where you you can be more secure what about the flip side of things what if your partner doesn't feel any jealousy like i'd be weirded out by that in a relationship i, I think that would make me feel some type of way i would definitely not feel like fully secure yeah like it it would it's obviously there's this like i, I Fuck, I, I understand that, that, generally speaking, like jealousy can have all of these like bad repercussions and bad um, impacts on your relationship and all of that shit. But at the same time, like if my partner's genuinely like if the demeanor I get off of them is that like they're happy with me, they're satisfied. But if I leave, they'll just find someone else. And that's that. Like I would I don't know if I would be able to be secure in that relationship. Ooh, yeah, uh, is like that in relationships, and that's part of what I brought up. People hate it. People absolutely hate it. Because I'm just like, yeah, you know, like I love you for the person that you are and you know at some point that might not work out i'm not i'm a not a possessive person uh whatsoever so yeah i just don't i i mm -hmm. yeah it's terrible for relationships um I'll it's a honest. 
It's a good question. Um, you know, uh, like, uh, again, you know, I'm also somebody who's not very jealous. Even, like, before, like, Beckett and I started dating, uh, or not dating, uh, before Beckett and I were public about us dating, um, you know, there was, um, there was, like, a panel where I saw, like, somebody, some girl was, like, flirting with him. And I wasn't really threatened by it or or jealous of it i thought it was funny more than anything else you know because you know i could tell that he was uncomfortable with it but um but yeah like for the most part i'm not i'm not a jealous person the only time i think i could like i think it would depend on how the they're interacting with him i guess and how he's interacting what if he was back. into it what if he was if into he was... it and like was like pushing the boundaries would that make you jealous and would you dislike that that would that would make me jealous but that would if he were into it that would make me like think about whether the relationship is 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 right you know because i'm the type of person that will walk away if i feel like if i feel like he, it's to the point where he's like enjoying it and he's he's pushing the boundaries he's not really invested in me anyways right i will say though like uh while i don't have like a like that kind of jealousy problem i'm a very competitive person so, you know, I, I, um, like I, I compete with everybody around me and it's probably not healthy. I, I, I have in the past compete with, com competed with him a little bit as well. So, but yeah, I don't know. What does so. that competition mean in the context of like people who you might consider to be like challengers for Beckett's hand, you know? I don't really, I, I don't really see many challengers for his him you know like like the people that i do see like that you know that like hit on him and stuff like i i'm not really threatened by it um maybe occasionally one here or there but that would be more depending on how he reacts to it i guess so if that makes sense does yeah, no, no, it, it makes sense i was just wondering if that like feeling of competitiveness if that is just like how you feel about your jealousy but like it will be difficult really, to no. dig that out. Yeah, not really. <laughs> so. Yeah, I feel I think yeah. more secure. Really... I, f I feel more secure what? when people don't have insecure attachment to me. But uh, you know, yeah. that it means like it means like insecurities. Also, is it, what I'll say is like it, you right. know, people say like jealousy is insecurity. Well, I will say I still have my insecurities right without the jealousy. Um, mm -hmm. I still have like, I still have like days where I'm like down in the dumps at, like, or in like the dark corners of, you know, of the world. Right. Like, uh, like, yeah, I will have days where I'm still like in the shadows, even if I'm not feeling jealous about the way that he's interacting with people, it's still like insecurity. Right. So, yeah. There's other things that can like bum you out about relationships too. There's disappointment, you know, where it's like mm -hmm. somebody does something and you're like, yeah, this was not good. And you know, even if we address it, you can be like bummed out about it, and that's in a relationship. But I think the larger, ow, oh, the, I like the larger uh, point to go ahead and make uh, of that is like, yeah, like once it turns into like the negative format where it's like gonna be causing you to go into those problems, that's when like you really definitely need to address it. I think there's healthy jealousy yeah. before that. Um, I just want to know. Is there any other root of jealousy other than insecurity? Are we just uh, accepting that that's the root of all jealousy is insecurity? No, I don't um, think it. I, I actually do. I disagree with people when I say like the root okay. when people say the root of jealousy is insecurity, because, I, again, I think insecurity can be separate of jealousy and I think jealousy can be warranted. You know, I think jealousy is not even necessarily insecurity it can be like um, jealousy can be like, you know, um, why is this person disrespecting maybe. me? You know? Hold yeah, on, because hey, but... hold on, wait, 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 because that it, it, that doesn't make sense. So, like, when even just by definition, jealousy is insecurity. Like, but it's it's the lack it... of security in some sort of scenario, right? That again, you, I feel like you guys are like attaching insecurity to like this is bad, and and so okay. you're saying, well, jealousy isn't necessarily bad, but it's no matter what scenario you bring up, definitionally, uh. Jealousy is insecurity and will always be insecurity, well, not just necessary. not necessarily some, bad. Some people can feel jealous even knowing that their partner is never going to leave them, right? Um, can I can I ask you a question about what you said, Tom, to maybe clarify what you said? No. I, I, okay, well, then I'm just going to say uh, what I think you're saying. Uh, it sounds like to me what Tom is saying is that 
that it is insecurity uh, no matter what. Whereas usually when we say I'm insecure, we're talking about something inside myself is uh, weak or fragile, and that's what I'm feeling. But there's also external insecurity as well. Like the way things are going uh, with this thing over here doesn't make me feel very secure that it's going to go the way that uh, it needs to go for me. That would be but like an external be insecurity. I feel like it's still going to come back to a feeling that's inside of you that will always be internal, right? Sure, but like the cause is not inside. Like the cause is like seeing the events not going in the way that like it needs to go for you. Sure, it's you hard to know the difference. Insecure. It sounds like you're saying there's something. There are types of insecurities that are rational, and there are types of insecurities that are irrational. Um, sure. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. Then yeah, of course. I I obviously agree with that. And I like even when when you brought up the example or the question of like you know society pushing these things again i think that like people in monogamous relationships are going to have some sort of jealousy to want to stay in those sorts of relationships um and i think that a lot of times especially because of the ideas with feminism that men are overly possessive that men showing any sort of possessiveness uh lots of times can be overly shamed and overly critiqued and um i think that men especially showing some sort of emotion or feelings lots of times can be stigmatized and overly stigmatized. And so men are afraid of talking about being jealous and are afraid of talking about how they feel within these relationships a lot. And even though they are definitely being encouraged to feel those way that that way as well. And so, yeah, I think that there's like a weird dynamic where we do have to find some sort of even medium that is healthy, that is going to be productive within your relationship. And that's going to, um, actually bring you guys to like a better place that you're both where you're both happy. Yeah, I That's feel a, like right, you, you, there's. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna let everyone talk for me. I'm not gonna fight. Go, go for it. No, I know you do, but <laughs> if you're making the Brittany, people more healthy. Go to the next, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> um, so, here. so I, I I feel like that Tom is actually right. Like I I wasn't with you until now, but like yeah, I think we're just, like men are sort of told to have ultimate trust for like women, and any lack of trust is is like bad. But there are like um. The, the insecurity, like the, the main one that a lot of people can just think of top of their head with jealousy is like, well, what if she has sex with the guy who's better in bed? What if that like ruins the relationship? And you don't really know. It's hard to know for sh- sure if it would ruin the relationship or not. You would have to really have a lot of like understanding and communication with your partner to be able to know like for sure, like how 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 secure should I be in this relationship? And if you don't just trust her that, oh, no, no, she, no matter what, she'll definitely always love me, even if everybody's better at sex, you know, like, like, maybe, maybe you're right to be insecure, uh, but you need to, like, develop that trust somehow, you know? I don't know if this is a cultural thing, and I'm sorry for butting in, but, like, I don't think I've ever been told that, like, I have to be infinitely trustworthy of I'm, women. Nobody, no, I'm saying that implicit, like, that's not explicitly like said. I'm, say, explicitly I'm saying, I'm saying, like, if you express as a lack of trust that like a lack of security in in a, in a woman like you're if you think that her having sex with another guy could ruin the relationship it's like you're 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 do you're doing a disservice to women oh that would never happen but it could happen i will say and you're like invading her autonomy as well just by expressing that she does something that makes you feel insecure yeah, this is interesting. I want to say what go off what Tom said earlier kind of where i feel like very possessive of my partner I don't feel very jealous of him, but I also show hit to him and other people. I don't care what other people do. Other people can try to make a pass. Don't care. Other people just don't even register as interesting to me. I don't notice them. And I think he probably feels similarly where we already got married. Like we chose each other. Everyone else can go kick rocks. But I want him to be reassured that I do love him every day and it grows in that love and all that stuff because we're humans and we get insecure about hey, I'm just checking, like, I have borderline, hello, I'm, like, going to be fear of abandonment for a while, (laughs) like, you know, I'm working on it, but it might be there forever, so even within the relationship, as secure as we are, we all have our own personal traumas we bring into relationships that even though we are 1,000% sure, we might even need the verbal confirmation, so you know that meme of a girl who's, like, 12 years into the marriage, and she's like, do you love me? That's going to be me till I'm 90. And he has to play the role of just saying, yes, I love you. And I'm like, cool. Even though I know that, I'm wearing a ring. I know. Like, we know there's that physical, verbal reassurance that, like, is very, very great to experience without needing to go to the real place of insecurity. It's almost like a performative insecurity, right? Because, like, how much more secure can you be in a relationship at some point, right? Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a performative insecurity that I think is really human and important. 
it's like a feeling of like, just reassure me, right? Just reassure me. Also, we're people. Like we need to have our needs met. And sometimes we show love in ways like from making someone dinner to kissing them on the forehead to watching anime. Like you're you're signaling to your partner, I care about you. And I want the possessiveness to be shown in the relationship, but not because of other people. Like other people will never come in between this relationship because I didn't marry other people. Like I've even had friends I've had to tell, like, I know you sleep with married people. If you even ask me, even hint that you would be interested while I'm married, I will never talk to you again. Because like it's so offensive to me, this idea. But to other people, it's normal. They, they don't care, right? But it's not about other people. So I just want to say it that way. Maybe it's like I don't I, – because I, I want to show my partner I love them. I want to feel possessive. I want to pin him down and be like, you're mine, right? None of that has to do with yeah. other people. But it is something I do express. Would you think that um, what you're seeking though, right? Because you've already said you think insecurity is bad. Um, so you're seeking security, right, as the response to insecurity. And that ultimately is like how you're – saying like i'm placing this whole thing off of i care about 90 which is like i think a fair thing um you know like that's i have grandparents that are that old like i know that like when one of them goes the other one goes that's like the kind of pair bonding that we have um so it's just like so you just abstract jealousy away by just kind of like just immediately approaching it oh, like over and over again effectively because i think like how we deal with jealousy like is probably the best thing that we can all talk about because I think that would be cool because I think that we're arguing about emotions um, and I think that's pretty sick and I think that all emotions are valid and we're all going to have our own experiences with that so I think us responding to what jealousy is is something I actually want to know uh, Tom, <laughs> domestic violence you hate that? Um, Brittany <laughs> uh, you know like love and uh, love and bringing you in um I respond to jealousy with literally nothing. I don't feel possessiveness uh, towards people, and I don't want that. I am a very singular person. I have my cats, and that's kind of what I do. I'm a raven man. So, uh, Rezzy, that's a really good point. I think we can yeah. get into that really well with my next question. But also, I got to ask you, what was the cat's name that you brought up there? That's Emilio. Okay, Emilio. Really uh, I really, I really enjoyed you uh, whipping oh, your cat dude. up into the camera like that. Um, yeah, that was, it was really fun. Yeah, he, um, um, he's, he's, he's baby, and so like he does <laughs> it, and he, because he gets uh, mad. If you watched earlier, Loker, the little orange one, came up and got like head pats, so Emilio starts stalking because he gets jealous. Um, which also was like a totally separate thing. I don't think humans are the only beings that experience jealousy. And I think it's actually healthy when my cats are jealous of one another when I'm paying attention to them. Uh, for them to like go ahead and instate even their like little imposition and kind of like integrate with them. <laughs> so I think there's maybe an out human like argument that we can have too. Uh, well, I think it's only healthy if, if you... That. It's only healthy if you're saying that if they didn't do that, you wouldn't give them equal attention, which... Which well, okay, I, I think I could be capable thing, though, of, but I don't. It's not. They're cats, right? And my thing with cats is like you give them their space; they will come to you when they do, right? So them mm -hmm. doing that is actually necessary for me to go ahead and forge that relationship with them, at least in the way that I raise cats. And I don't know; I've had like yeah. a lot of good cats, so I got. I can oh, I'm a dog. Longer. I'm a dog person. I'm. I don't. I'm not so familiar with cats. <laughs> yeah. Okay. the The next question is. Um, when somebody makes a person uh so i guess well i'll just say you the universal you if somebody makes you jealous is it their responsibility to resolve that feeling in you or is it your responsibility to resolve that feeling in yourself um i think it's oh sorry and uh i just want to say i started the poll on youtube but they're not very um uh, the first one it uh the people aren't super responsive to it so if you guys want uh the person that you're watching on their stream to uh, uh, get one of the rewards for the stream, uh, just pop over real quick and vote for them and then go back to where you're at. Go ahead, Star. Yeah, I was uh, going to say, I think, um, I think it depends on why you're feeling jealous, right? If you're, if you have like a reasonable um, fear and that's leading you to be jealous, then yeah, you know, it's best to share that with a partner. Um, I think also, you know, while it's not on, on the, you know, and, and maybe you work through that together, if it's an unreasonable, um, fear, if it's something that's like, just kind of crazy, why are you acting this way? You know, um, generally I don't think it's, I don't think it's on the other partner to fix the situation, but I do think that it is still healthy for you both to talk about it. 
Um, so, uh, and just so that they're aware of it, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, but I don't know. Um, I think they can fix it. Um, I think this is a type of compromise we do all the time and it's kind of sick, honestly, but, we, but like, it's just really, it's really hard to, to find equilibrium here. Like there are people that could be happy without being monogamous, but they're in a monogamous relationship because their partner is monogamous and they just, it's like, like your, your partner's just like, look, I like, I know that I can trust you to, to like sleep with other people, but I just literally go insane. I literally cannot handle it. Like I, I start seeing shit that's not happening and like I, I you, we cannot be dating and it, it, it won't work for me. Um, and I know it's kind of sick to make that compromise, but we do. But that, that, that really, that wouldn't really be a jealousy thing per se, right? That just sounds like your values are like somewhat incompatible. No. If one of your partners willing to like, or wanting to have sex with more people and the other one can't handle that. Yeah. I'm saying they can't handle it because they think that, it'll ruin their relationship they think that they, they become jealous of the other people they they don't think that yeah but that would sound like incompatible values right unless you want to unless you want to stake a claim that like all of monogamy is rooted in insecurity then like it's a values thing it is it is a values thing or rooted in insecurity it's it, it, monogamy is rooted in insecurity yeah no i i, I don't right, i don't think that there, one's <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, I mean, I to, in some, to some, to some, to some extent, yeah, is a form of dealing with insecurity for a lot of people. Um, you know, relationships offer security in other individuals. So yeah, that's a lot of the. I think a lot of why we people get into relationships and why people value them. Um, so yeah, I think like yeah, relationships are born out of insecurity as a response to it instead of like mm -hmm. you know anything else. Does anyone ever do anything because they're oh, happy? Wow. Damn, am I the only person that just does shit because it makes me oh, happy? I absolutely. Yeah, I absolutely. <laughs> no, I, I, I can't relate Getting rid to... of insecurities can make you happy. Sometimes th some things are a dichotomy where like being alone is going to make you sad and being with somebody is going to make you happy. It, or like, would have both make me happy. So it's just like you're choosing one happiness over another happiness. <laughs> It's also it's, it's also just possible, I don't I don't I think humans do like actually look for companionship. They yeah, you're right. Generally speaking, else for to sure. accept them. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but so so like but like I wouldn't say that looking for companionship is rooted in insecurity, right? Like I I and I also I don't like the idea of like saying but like but some people do that. Like yeah, I can think of a handful of people who go to the gym because they're insecure in what they look like, but that doesn't mean that everyone who goes to the gym is insecure. That is just not how a lot of people make their day-to-day -day decisions. Just real quick, you guys, Tom, you won the vote. It was it was remarkably on the buzzer. Uh, I can only have four options. I was going to have to make another poll. And like four people voted for you as I clicked. It was crazy. <laughs> so you Let's get to go. pick if you want to give somebody an un one minute of uninterrupted uh, talking time uh, or if you want to be able to make somebody steal man another person's position. And then whatever one you don't pick, you get to give to another person. And you can just claim that by raising your hand and I'll call on you right away and you can use it. So I can use it whenever or right now? Uh, you can use it whenever you want. So you get to pick between letting somebody speak for one minute uninterrupted. You can't pick yourself. Uh, or you can make somebody steel man the person that they're arguing with's position for 30 seconds to a minute uninterrupted. Okay. And you can hold on to that. Which one do you want for yourself? I I, Bro, you have to choose oh, so I what the pick fuck. One I need to open up a notepad. One for somebody else. Wait, What's so that? can you have to be for what? somebody else? Because I'm no, encouraging hold, cooperation. I'm a little confused. So, so you can you choose what I they argue about? Oh. Hold on, hold no. on. I pick one for myself and one for somebody else. That's what he yep. just said. Which one? Uh, okay, yes. So I would have to steel man somebody else then. No, no, you can make somebody steel man the person they're arguing with. I'm so lost. All right, wait, wait, wait. Just right, right, talk wait, for wait, a minute, wait, wait, wait. Tom. I'll explain it. Okay, so okay. basically, let's say that two people are arguing. You can force one of them to try to argue the other side of it, or you can give one. You cannot receive these benefits. You are now the moderator of the panel, Tom. All right? You but he just said, which one yeah, do you pick for yourself? Think of this as a consumable in a video game. Oh, okay. So you're one just, of them. You don't mean pick what? for myself. You just mean pick one of those two. I'll, I'll you, take you the get, one minute. Okay, so you get to make somebody. Uh, you get to mute everybody but the person who's speaking, who isn't you, once during the stream, and then you get to pick somebody else. They have like the steel man, a person consumable. Who okay. do you want to give that to? I do. I do it now or 
yeah, you pick the person you want to have that now, and then they they get to use that. Like you get to use your let them speak for a minute consumable. Okay, I think Drazi was second in your poll, right? So I'll I'll pick Drazi for the one minute uh, thing. No, no, Jesus I, Christ! I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm not so trying to make this the... confusing. <laughs> It is confusing. You can't pick Drazi. You can't pick Drazi. No, Drazi. sorry. Did I say Drazi? I meant Rezzy. Okay. Um, Rezzy? The, the you two can, of you are, are your names you are get, too similar. Sorry. Okay. Rezzy, you know oh, how okay. you know how you to use it. Tom, at any point, raise your mm -hmm. hand and you can have everybody uh, muted except for a uh, person who isn't you at any point during this stream. You can do this once. Okay? Okay. Rezzy, do you understand this how yours works? Yeah, I got a, I got a rude Mary idea. Fuck, I was I'm gonna not do it and We're not going to do it right, but we're going to try, and it's going to be great. <laughs> I'm going to be really happy. I was busy banning the Thorps. Okay, this is sort of my... Somebody suggested I do the cage match thing, and mm -hmm. uh, that's so adversarial, I figured I would do a, like, a nice version of it. I don't think like adversarial relationships are not necessarily nice <sighs> to begin with, though. I think there's like value in having adversarial relationships to begin with. Again, like jealousy that is going to push us with another person like if i have one person that like i'm constantly going smooth. ahead and having like a little bit of a fight with and everything uh i am jealous if they do a little better than me but that's going to be something that pushes me i think that's outside relationship jealousy that's like kind of based in the shit and i think that more people should engage in it hmm. isn't that just competitiveness it's there's still jealousy that comes from competitiveness, even if like, you know, is there a jealousy of like seeing somebody that was like, well, if you're a boxer, you see old Muhammad Ali, like, you know, videos like you can have jealousy that he has that capacity to do those things. Right. Because he has skills you don't possess. Isn't that envy, though? That's envy. Is yeah. that envy? Yeah. yeah. So, so jealousy is losing like... something. Envy's wanting something. More or yeah, less. that's that, like Resi. I, I, I totally I get what you're saying though, because yeah. to me, until this panel, they were the same thing. <laughs> yeah, well, it, because I think it's like even then, it's like, well, then, well, how is it not jealousy if like you see like, you, all right, say you do well at something and then you're no longer the top dog you're then jealous of the top dog right so there is something to be lost but vegeta is jealous these, of like, goku again, he like, talks about it right on sexual romantic relationships if goku whatever, isn't right? jealous of I, vegeta I don't know. i'm trying to find a place out of this i think there's still a jealousy you can have a jealousy there right envy can make you I, jealous i don't Rizzi. think that's i don't think that's how that would work i i want to say no goku just likes to be strong right? to be strong Vegeta sure, but I don't know if you can feel jealousy either. towards losing a number one spot in something. <clears throat> you know, that would be like I feel like jealousy is is very much rooted in like the the interpersonal dynamics that you have with people. That's why we have different words for this, right? Yeah, That's why we would describe like the sports part of it as competitiveness. No, we just have these things words are these things aren't the real. Made way these are fucking words. We we made these things up. Like they're like you can you can like you can describe a situation where you make it into the same thing like you could say that i'm jealous um that i have lost something i didn't even have uh like in, in your in your internal world that's could be how, yes, how you could be experiencing be it um so like it's really just the context and we're using the words in different contexts but are really talking about weird little hard to define things but vegeta suffers differently than but that goku, just sounds right? like scuffed language but goku suffers because people get hurt vegeta suffers i mean it's jealous hard it's hard to, it's hard to define <clears throat> yeah that's how you could actually be like like um like let's say that you define yourself as a good um boxer and yeah, when you see Ty tyson mm -hmm. fight that's um you feel like you've lost it. something by seeing someone who's such a great fighter i feel like i i kind of i get where you're coming from i just i, I it just sounds like envy of extra steps loss of hope, no i'm yeah. what i'm saying is like emotions aren't like actually very easily definable and delineatable that like we have these con these words for different contexts but it's actually hard to define an emotion so what well, i don't know if anybody uh i think i think we started to go over it if if somebody makes you feel jealous should it be up to them to make you not feel jealous or is that all on you it depends on the context. Like literally, if it's in a like friendship or relationship, like sometimes it takes both. Sometimes it takes one. Sometimes one person isn't willing to listen and then you have to do it on your own. But most of the time, I really think like just talking it out helps a lot because then you can put an image or at least a verbalization to this thing that's been haunting you. Like sometimes saying it to somebody who can hear you and then throw it back at you is really helpful. And then sometimes – 
you know, it just depends totally on the context, right? To black and white it, I think, would lose the nuance of the, an emotion that is so, like you said, prevalent in society, but it's so deeply uh, shameful in a lot of cultures that I've been involved in. And so it kind of like there's a pride in never being jealous where I'm from, right? Because to be jealous or envious is to say like you're weaker than the other person. You should be in competition with yourself, not others, right? And so I think there's something really like beautiful about saying like, actually, I think this makes me kind of jealous and I think I want to work on that or hey, I think I'm kind of envious and that's so weird, but I think I am. It's like admitting it is such a strength, but also saying it out loud and having someone hear it and then having someone confirm it or even say like, oh, yeah, I think that's reasonable or unreasonable can help you actually find the solution you're looking for, which might just be acceptance that you're in that state to begin with. Yeah, I, I think if if I was to if I could build up on that a little bit, because like we talk in in abstract quite a lot. I I want to start like bringing in more examples from like uh, fuck it, my own personal life, just just for the sake of like having some something tangible maybe for us to jump to for the sake of the conversation. So like it it feels like if I look at, if I take a look at like my relationship as holistically as I can, I can think of like so many instances where I was being jealous. Where that was like a me issue. It wasn't a, it wasn't my partner's job to fix me. But at the same time, the effort that she put into trying to alleviate some of those concerns helped me in fixing me big time. And like at the same time, life is complicated, right? Like I've had days where my partner sat next to me and we're both working remotely for like six hours straight, and we're literally two meters away from each other. And like we haven't said a word to each other just because how absorbed we are in our work. Now imagine a scenario where like we're back to working from the office, right? It's a nine to five. I hit the gym for about eight hours a week. I I stream for 12 to 16 hours a week and assuming I'm not on like a Sigma male grind set doing overtime at either work or streaming, then like it starts becoming the reality that my partner suddenly spending more time at work with coworkers than we are spending with each other. And I feel like if she at that point isn't willing to meet me in the middle, I, I can't fix that issue on my own. Like what the fuck am I supposed to do? Just barge in on her like at her workplace? Like there, there has to be like a middle ground. Like I'm a big fan of negotiating. That's like what I like sounds like a business deal, but kind of is like, hey, we're two people. We're adults. We've asked each other to literally change our whole lives to be together. So I'm going to ask you once again to do that. And if you wouldn't mind, I need more of your time. I need more attention. Right. Like I think that's within reason. If if you're doing long term monogamy or even polyamory, if you're doing long term cohabitation, you are already asking someone to do something very huge literally like change your whole life and i moved countries okay like it's a big deal and then on top of that it's we're gonna grow old together we're gonna do this thing called life together right so if you're in that kind of a commitment then i think it makes sense to ask anything you want of your partner and to see what can actually happen right like as long as you guys share values it shouldn't be that hard to compromise Right. Yeah, I mean, the, the negotiation part of this is super crucial. It's just in my anecdotal experience, most people are thoroughly dog shit at that part of being together with another human being. For sure. I think that's my that's why my work is centered on it, because most people are bad at these things because they're insecure or they're ashamed or they don't want to realize like, hey, they're human. You're going to do human things, bros. And human things means not acting within reason and also being too in reason. I think I, I don't know your names yet, guys. I'm sorry. I'm learning. I wish your names were on screen for me. But like Catman, like I think you said it. Emotions. We're emotional okay. creatures. Yeah. 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 Rezzy. It's fine. Rezzy. Yeah. Rezzy. OK. Rezzy. I thought you were calling me Catman. No. <laughs> Yeah, no, I realize it's like I, I had both of my cats come around, so. Yeah, yeah, it's like we're emotional creatures, and I think we owe ourselves, if we want to be healthy and know our like who we are as a consciousness, I think we owe ourselves that relationship with our feelings against the logic, right? So when you're getting into a relationship with friends or family and anyone else, you're doing the feelings you have when you're together, and then the logical resume of why you're compatible in the first place, either as friends or in romantic entanglements, right? Yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. I would just say that, like, specifically to answer the question whether this is something right, that, like, we should both... Thing, I want you to agree with it 0%. That's how this works, right? I think that the healthiest way for two people to be together is to just batter the shit out of each other on a daily <laughs> basis, go. okay? Let's that go. leads to a level of hate-fucking that breeds, <laughs> like, love in the relationship that is too, too profound to even describe with words. Is is this, is this is this what I'm is this how this goes? I, I think that's how it works. I thought it was going to be funny, and it. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh fuck. I lost my train of thought now, Rezzy, You absolute bastard. <laughs> Thanks. Um, oh yeah, yeah. No, I I remember. Yeah. So like with the, I would say 
genuinely in most cases unless there's like a dysfunctional relationship that we're talking about which in twitch ball might be the majority of them but i'm going to assume that like we're talking about just normal normal human beings you know being normal human beings together um usually it will be like a you will have to meet in the middle right your partner might be somewhat unreasonable in their jealousy but it will still be important to like reach out to them and try and connect because like people sometimes have the idea in their head that like relationships are 50 50 right it's like you put half the effort someone else puts half the effort but like most of the time that's not how it works most of the time one of you is going to slack behind and the other one has to pick it up sometimes like sometimes it will be a, like a fucking rough period sometimes it will be easier sometimes it will be harder and generally speaking like you can't always expect your partner to be fully reasonable sometimes they're going to say some dumb shit sometimes they're going to be like had some dumb arguments i've done it my partner has done it and we'll do it plenty more times in the years to come and like you have to meet the person and like at least try to meet them in the middle right like you can't always expect their jealousy to be reasonable you can't just tell them to go fuck themselves because like however they're feeling you think isn't appropriate yeah i think benay brown says it all the time how there is this assumption we can give 50 50 and look i'm a very like i talk a big game i i think i put out that energy that i expect that in my relationships but honestly like him and i wake up every day and I'm, we both have like chronic i have chronic health issues and we're neurodivergent and i'll be like how many spoons we got today bro what can we do today? Like what's it has to get done? What's the responsibilities we have as adults and like, you know, people who pay rent? And then what are the things that we hope to get done today? Like maybe hobbies, maybe D D. What are we doing? I'm just I work seven days a week. So what are we doing? I stream five days a week. It's like we have to wake up every day and ask ourselves, like, what can I do today? And I think that gives us both an opportunity to have a safe space of saying, like, okay, I'm gonna do the requirements of like what needs to get done, the dishes and the chores and the cat has to get fed. But all that other stuff I want to do, eh, I'll do it tomorrow, right? Because it's not a part of the like mandatory list. I think giving your partner a safe space to have like sort of – I don't want to call it an outburst. I think that's the wrong word. But sort of like I'll say, you know, okay, I'll use safe words because I really like those. But I'll be like, yellow, I need to vent about my job and I need to get it out now so I don't do it on stream. And so I'll like run around the living room and vent about my job and talk oh, shit. And then go I'm ahead, like, Tom. Okay. Uh, Jesus Stardust fucking Christ. Like Stardust, okay. He was using his thing. So. Oh, he's yeah, his thing. Stardust though. looks like she's not paying attention, so she needs to talk for one minute. Now. Oh, damn. Go ahead, Stardust. Who, me? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's up? So I think that, um, you know, I think that the jealousy conversation, to be honest, is it, it's kind of like gone in circles a couple of times. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess, like, from a psychology perspective, the jealousy and envy thing is different. But, you know, for me, it's always been the same. Um, and I almost wonder, you know, maybe it would be a good topic if we, like, at, later on in, in this panel visited whether, like, envy is a healthy thing. Um, that, that might be something interesting. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, the, the feelings can be valid and they can still be like irrational, right? Um, so somebody somebody can be jealous, um, and that that can be valid that they're jealous, but it also can be irrational. And people have to work through that. And even when it's irrational, it's probably healthy to communicate that to you know whoever you're dealing that with, um, so they know, you know, not so that they can fix it, right? Just so that they know that you're like triggered a little bit by it. And so they know that you're working on it as well. Um, you can keep going, uh, but your minute is up. Oh, okay. Well, well I do want to keep going. So um, well done, thank you. I, I do want to keep going. And I will say, you know, a again, for me, like a not a jealous person, but like, yeah, depending on how my partner reacts to it, I think the threat for me comes for, comes, I'm not threatened by like, I'm not threatened by um, somebody hitting on my partner. I would be more, I would be significantly threatened if my partner were hitting on somebody else or engaging in somebody hitting on them, right? So that's where it comes for me. If somebody like tries to like, you know, uh, like Tom's example, somebody tries to like, uh, I don't know, grope my partner and, and, and my partner is completely unaware. My partner is like, what the fuck's going on? Um, yeah, again, I'm I'm not going to be upset with my partner unless I think that they're into it, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> that was a good caveat at the end. Unless yeah, you think yeah. they're into. It. Yeah. What if they didn't yeah, want to be into it? <laughs> well, I mean, look, there's there's a, I'm just teasing. Again, uh, look, if look, if 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 you know, you know what? Never mind. I'm, that's gonna. It's. I I had something in my head, but it's it, in my head. I realize if I say it, it's gonna sound really crass. So I'm not gonna say it. So. What if they yeah. perform the action, 
unenthusiastically. <laughs> hmm. also, also, I'm really sorry, Brittany. Uh, we you don't believe it? You after the, you want. You don't be, if they don't believe it? I had something to say about Brittany, like, uh, like to because because something she said earlier about her own relationship, um, I, I had in my mind, uh, like, so she was talking about like making these compromises, and she was talking about in her own relationship, some type of validation, like, or reminding her, like, like of like the the healthiness of the relationship, and uh, that's something that like I'm, I'm not dating you, so but that's something that like doesn't work for me, like so like but um it I it would be really uh it would be awful of me to like kind of if if i'm gonna not give you that it's gonna be because like like we're working on something together but, but um like for me it's obvious that would come from being neglected or something and you are sort of expect you, you have this constant like like voice of abuse that is constantly telling something and you need like a, an, a, an affirmation so that you can like you know ease that um and and it's not like it's it's like you, you there's no good and bad emotions like people are the way they are because of their like their experience it's not like you can debate away someone's emotions and their feelings and sometimes you have to make these compromises if you love someone you want to be with them and you have to you know this is like what i need this is what you need you know I don't know. There absolutely there are absolutely good and bad emotions Real yeah, I, I've rationalized um, myself out of emotions. Uh, you guys, when Tom called on me to speak for a minute, and Tom Tom was like, oh, really good job, Stardust. I just want to say, I didn't Whoa. do anything. I literally I just repeated no, 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 no. everything I that I said sarcastic. earlier in this conversation. I I, everything that sarcastic. I said in that one minute, everything I said in that one minute was everything that I said, like, like 10 minutes ago. Oh, so ago. you're saying you didn't actually do a good job. Okay, I got you. No, I'm just, I, yeah, I'm just saying. So. Okay. Congratulations, Tom, I, on finding immediately finding a way to maliciously use my um <laughs> my kindness consumables in the panel. Sorry. I'm I'm it's hard to even be mad because I'm actually impressed that you were so quickly able to utilize it maliciously. <laughs> I was even waiting for Brittany to pause too, because I thought she paused, and so that's when I raised my hand and I didn't mean we kept going. That was my fault. It felt malicious um, to me because I felt so bad to interrupt her. She was being she was saying interesting things. She was talking with her hand. She was clearly into what she was saying. I was like, fuck. Okay. I was happy to wait until she was done. I I I, I my apologies. You raised your hand and she was still going. Yeah, I my should bad. have derailed um, the, the panel with that one minute instead of repeating everything. That would have been better, I think. It would but... have been awesome. Actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I expected yeah. you to talk about something totally different than what uh, we yeah. were talking about. Sorry, I just um, my 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 default autopilot just like brings up everything I've already said and spits it back out. So yeah. But yeah, right, start if we get into the points, if, if we get into yeah, the yeah, point yeah. where we kind of steal man the... Resi's position now. <laughs> I don't What's know what position? Rezzy's position is. I think all I don't of know. us on this panel agree. If I'm going to be real, yeah. I think for the most part, everybody on this panel agrees. So we're just kind of talking in circles. We need to create some contention yeah. here. Um, we need yeah. To create like, some... and, yeah, that's yes. why I've been trying, kind of trying to draw like the steel manning of the next my question. The steel manning of my position, which would be an opposite, is what if you don't feel possessiveness in a relationship? That's what jealousy, <clears> I think if we're going to talk about positive insecurity, like possessiveness might be a root for well, that. That's where well, um, you that's can where be possessive and not thing, jealous, uh, but... right? You can be possessive well, and not have jealousy. I don't, so, I don't, I don't know if I don't you can be possessive and not have jealousy. Yeah, I don't think I, you can. I, I, I was just about to say this. So I, hold like, on, hold I on. Let me my, get my man is my man, you know, and I don't have to worry about it, right? Like well, I'm possessive like, over my cat, it's girl. It's ownership. <laughs> it's mine. Uh, so I take I care of it. I'm responsible for it. Yeah. With uh, this is, this is a, and like Nike a healthy bit of ownership in a relationship, though. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're sharing a life together, right? It's fair that you both are like have some ownership over each other you negotiate this ownership with each other right so if you want to like that's the thing right everyone has a different relationship model so i don't want to assume anyone's going to do it the same way we're all going to do it but yeah in my relationship that is what we negotiated it's what we clearly wanted like we didn't just choose monogamy because it was the default right i did like poly and open for 10 plus years we chose it because it made sense for the two people <clears throat> that we were and it was the most efficient for our relationship right and so again like when you're choosing these models you're saying what works for me that kind of build a bear relationship that i think we could all have if we wanted 
Yeah, like um, you don't have to you don't have to stay poly for the, your whole life. You can switch to monogamy. You can have every relationship you have with every every human interaction is a relationship in one way, shape, or form. All right. If we're going to examine it like through that lens, yes, like there's like the relationship between partners, but we have relationships with each other. I have a relationship with Smith. He makes videos that I enjoy. I have relationships with everybody, like here aside from Brittany, because I've known most of you for a while. All right. So there's still like we can talk about jealousy in these relationships even it's like it's just a lot of brain retard i that's our relationship <laughs> did, yeah. yeah well you said that my mother was diseased and then that made gate made me a water brain retard and that's sorry, fine it was a good one i no, thought I it was funny but yeah sorry. yeah it's well i i get angry all right i will never i i feed my emotion but like i'm a singular so like i just kind of feed my emotion <laughs> through doing things if um, it makes you feel yeah. better i i've called many people that so oh yeah. i know i figured it <laughs> yeah, out my yeah. well my father uh i talked to him about it and he's like, so you're mad at somebody because she called you a pinhead? And I'm like, <laughs> you son of a bitch. And like, I literally lost my mind because I'm just like, yeah, I'm not that mad about this anymore. It was just that. And I'm like, all right, well, that's fine. I'll live with it. Yeah. I also need, I'm, yeah, be back. Right so the the next question well, you know, that I'm I have call is. I'm fucking Tom Foolery a melon head. So sorry. Tom has a great Damn. head, though. He does have a really good head yeah. for it. But you're still a melon head. He's, okay. He's about to cook up some crystal smith. That's what it looks like. <laughs> As somebody who has uh like had bad haircuts and shaved their head down, fuck you for having uh such a perfect fucking dome for that. <laughs> it's I'm actually impressed. Uh it's twice now people have brought up something that I, I didn't necessarily want to say both about hair too, but they, they gave me an opening. So the next Are you wearing next, a tie-dye uh, shirt? No, it's just cat. Uh, but the lighting's weird. I gotta get my lighting a little bit better. It's hard in the open space. I'm working on it. Um, the next, the next, uh, like subtopic here is, um, how, do, how do you guys, uh, deal with jealousy? And, and, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, like, if we want to talk about envy with this, you can too, just delineate because we keep bumping into that. And then, like, uh, remarkably, you guys are like backing off and trying to stay on subject. You guys are the best panelists, like, in the entire world. I swear to God, it's insane to me. Uh, uh, except for Tom, who weaponized my uh, my gift hey, of kindness, that but was, that, no, I was no, it was no, still really good fun, it was brilliant. Okay? It was that brilliant. Was it was it was to it was to keep uh, Stardust from falling asleep. So I I was trying to help. It I was did. Not I actually did appreciate that. Thank you, Tom. I, I do appreciate you're that. Welcome. I actually respect the reason. The, the reason this panel is so good that. is because Brittany's doing the thing where she lets other people talk, and the opposite of what I'm mm -hmm. doing right now, and mm -hmm. then they're all following her lead by being polite here i'll go i'll go then i'll answer that question because as Thank somebody you, who like is i'm actually super uncomfortable with jealousy when my partners express it to me because again what they're really expressing is a fear of losing me when i'm the most loyal so i'm like what's the problem like why are we insinuating i'm going to leave why would i do this and i think what happens is because if you date more of a free spirit and though i'm <clears throat> i'm a little bit of a free spirit i would say i would call myself one maybe a little bit i um I do like to come home and I like to be home. I like to primarily be home. But sometimes I can understand why people might be jealous towards me if they feel like, okay, well, you're a YouTuber. Some people might want you more than the average person maybe. Or maybe you give all these people who attention, like these panelists who get your whole night, seven whole hours I've been streaming. You know, it's like you give your attention to other people. I could understand that. But it also does trigger something in my insecurity and then it becomes like a revolving door of like, wait, are you doubting it? Because I'm fine. Why are we doubting it? And so for some people, jealousy can be passion and like a reassurance that somebody like loves you and wants you. And for me, it just it triggers all my like abandonment problems. <laughs> so for me, I'm like, I don't like it. It does not make me feel more secure. It makes me feel more insecure, which is kind of why I like possession because like possessiveness in a healthy way in my mind is more like a um, performative romantic display of consensual, um, you are mine. Not like mm -hmm. toxic, but like possessive, like in a nice consensual way of like, I want to explain to my partner, like, they're mine. I love them. You know, everything to, you know, signal loyalty and signal consistency. But jealousy, for some reason, it could be, like, because of my abandonment problems, right, that I'm always going to be maintaining for most of my life probably. Um, I'm always going to have to confirm that their jealousy isn't actually them worried I'm going to leave because I don't – I have no intention of leaving, right? So I'm like, what are they seeing? But they – you know, it happens, right? Like, people are going to experience jealousy. So I'm not faulting any of my partners for having experienced that in the past or in the present. I'm just saying that it's funny 
how I'm so secure, but I do become insecure on behalf of my partner because I want to make sure that I'm doing everything I can to reassure him always, always, you know? That's literally what I was about to say is that I've had a couple of conversations about like past relationships and things where I thought I went wrong. And a common theme in almost every relationship is that the girls who I'm with are upset that I am not more jealous. Like there are flattering types of like earlier I was talking about like encroachment on uh, my relationship. And there are flattering types like guys come and flirt with my girlfriend or they ask her for her number or like random dudes who I've never met don't know me don't know she has a boyfriend crap like that. Like I find that sort of stuff flattering. And I think that that's cool. And it's almost like an ego boost. Like, yeah, dude, I got a hot girlfriend. These all these guys like my girlfriend. That's dope. But um, that I, in those relationships, they would even find that I was flattered by those things and not upset by those things because I'm not a very jealous person. Um, and there were even times where, like, you know, they would come, like, upset saying, like, a guy was flirting with me and I liked it and I feel bad. And they're, like, crying. And I'm like, you know, it, I don't care. Like, guys, people flirt with people. Like, I, I, it's not a big deal to me. But they were upset, not just that they flirted with somebody else, but that I'm not upset about it and that I don't feel so uh, defensive over this relationship that they're afraid that like, I just don't care about the relationship that I'm not afraid of losing them. Even though I feel like I'm doing the other things like getting them flowers, telling them that I love them, you know, trying to do all of those other things that like, I guess, positive reinforcement instead of some sort of like defensive reinforcement, the, I, I, I feel like this is something that I have to work on going forward into relationships is to actually act more defensive in these ways and actually at, show them that I do care and that I am afraid of losing them in ways and maybe act as though I am jealous, even though I'm not. No, yeah, that's oh, called trauma bonding. Well, no, not always, right? Because look, no. if you're, because if, look, you could do it and it could be trauma bonding 100%. But I'll tell you, because I have a literal diagnosed personality disorder that's based off abandonment from childhood and I've gone to therapy, I've done DBT, I'm in the, I'm in recovery, right? I haven't had a trigger in over four years for a borderline. I still have the remnants of the intrusive thoughts, right? Those are still there. I'm very open with discussing that. So when my intrusive thought comes in, I look at my partner and I'm like, you love me, right? And he goes, yes, I love you, which reinforces his slight insecurity of like, we're good, right? And I'm like, yes, like we did a healthy, good thing. And then sometimes we'll even go over all those steps because he's done therapy. I've done therapy. We're older. We've come together. We ha we made like a really intentional decision, right? We did like an old school courting kind of marriage. Like we did very intentional dating, but we're human and we're always going to look at each other like we allow, we married a stranger. Like that's what a partner is. They are a full stranger and then you marry them. And there's always going to be moments of like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. And then you look at someone, you're like, no, 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 I'm good. I'm good. But it's going to come up. And so I think being optimistic and healthy and, and reasonable about it is one thing. But Smith, you're right. Like there is a chance of trauma bonding, which is why you got to be really careful. And I always look at dysfunction versus functional. How dysfunctional is the relationship and the relationship you're having with your trauma? Because just going to therapy doesn't mean all of a sudden my borderline goes away, right? This is a lifelong possible illness, though studies show, you know, very soon after therapy, within 15 to 20 years, it could absolutely dissipate. So good news for personality disorders or at least borderline. But the idea is like, I still have to work on it. And my partner still has to deal with my intrusive thoughts because he's married to me. And now he's going to have to see me go, oh my God, intrusive thought. So again, we don't want to say that once you've worked on it, you won't have trauma related intimacy, but trauma bonding is something you want to avoid, right? Because that's the negative aspect of um, like seeing your partner through their trauma instead of seeing your partner and their trauma. Does that make sense? Sorry, it makes I do sense. Gotta go. just, Thanks for you guys. Me, guys. Time, hey, Tom's got to go. Joining, Did you want to give a closer? Uh, no, thanks. I, I'm late. I, I screwed up. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't, uh, wasn't more on top Bye -bye. of it. Have a great night. No, time. it's all right. Later. I would say I, I don't know how I feel per se about like the idea of promoting just like pretending to be jealous. But at the same time, like for a lot of people, um, feeling jealous and wanting your partner to be kind of jealous of you is like an incredibly normal feeling. So like if you have none of that at all, you would be the outlier there, right? So doing a little bit of that might not necessarily be the worst idea in the world. I don't know. I don't know. I don't like that 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 uh, rationale. Like, I guess, I mean, you're right, and it's going to be give you better results. But also, like, um, that that's like the argument, like, you can use that for so many th things where just, like, kind of crushing your own personality and your, and your own 
uh, like like interests and stuff just so that you can match the norm so that you can fit better into society. And I, I don't I don't like that, uh, like especially if you think it's like unhealthy um, and that feels unhealthy for you, then like I, I just, like the, there are there are plenty of fish in the sh in the sea. Um, just make make your make your bit self better at finding the right people who match your what you got. I mean, yeah. I would I I agree with that holistically, like of course, but I I don't know if I'd describe this as crushing your norms per se, right? Like I would also say if you can't make slight shifts in your behavior for the sake of your partner in a long term relationship where like everything you do will ripple into their life and vice versa, then, like you probably aren't ready to be in a relationship right now because like you're still in like the pseudo intellectual phase of like everything be as I want it to be. Well, I think in that a healthy sort of value based relationship, you will basically be so compatible in my theory that you will have everything you want it to be. But people have real trauma. They have real cultural backgrounds. They have real lived lives that will infiltrate into the relationship. So they will be perfect. But you also have to be like, oh, we're going to do laundry that way. No, we're going to eat our cheese that way. And oh, that's interesting. And those are the little things that are going to come up naturally that could cause some tension. But I think Smith is trying to avoid like that dysfunctional bonding, the bonding over I'm going to stay in this relationship, even if my partner chronically cheats on me, because that's what people in love do. Like I'm assuming that that Smith is what you're trying to avoid. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and again, I, I understand that. It's just like in my experience, like if you want for your relationship or like if you want to be so compatible with your partner that like the relationship will be all you ever fantasized for it to be. Like in my experience, this is literally almost never true. And searching for a relationship with that mindset will leave most people incredibly dissatisfied with their lives because that's, you will not that's... find someone who clicks into you like a puzzle. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying someone who um will like like will actually that's you can never actually find like your fantasy. What I'm saying is someone who can tolerate the way that you are and you can tolerate the way that they are without changing your your like you you there are ways you are willing to change and there are ways that you aren't. And if you know what those are, then like you can match find a partner who you don't have to go outside of and like uh, like uh, undermine the things that are important to you just so that you can fit into their box there there are there 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 are people that don't need you to like be like i feel like most relationships are very repressed like people have relationships so they like rather than communicating ever they just like hide everything and like the more the more conflict they have the more that they bottle everything up and more that they hide from each other cool, but this and, would be like that's something that, that's hiding something, in, something right this is something that's important to this is something, and I'm not sure, but this is something that's important to me in general. Um, so, 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 what I'm saying is, um, if most people are well, gonna tend toward relationships like that, then for me to find a relationship that is like very, like, like, a, like, like, high, I, I want high conflict relationships, and that is not something everybody's going to be comfortable with, and that's okay with me. I just need to find those people. And it and it means it's more that much more satisfying when I do, and I know who they are like so much faster too. I mean, sure, but then again, this this would be like very much the opposite of what Tom was saying, right? Like, if Tom is willing to change in that, like, he will start performing some jealousy in order to like satisfy that part of his partner's desire, and that was like something, some conclusion that he's arrived at in a healthy manner. Then I don't quite see what the what the big problem is. If like he fundamentally doesn't feel jealousy, like I know that if my partner felt no jealousy, like that would be a problem for me. I would have like the the adjustment period would be fucking rough for that one. Yeah, like sure. we want to comfort our partners. We like we want to reassure them. I think like not to bring in BDSM, but I kind of feel like if you do it in the context of a scene, it's more safe. But I do also have a concern that if you perform jealousy, you're kind of lying to your partner. And I don't like to be lied to. So I wouldn't want my partner to perform in a way that feels like they're lying. So I think I have some concerns there. And I will say, depending on when you date a person, you know, if you date older versus younger, like you're deciding between growing into somebody with somebody and growing into a relationship with someone. They're different times in a person's life. So you're going to face different ways of bonding. And that's my concern as well when we're talking about even jealousy. Like you might not experience jealousy as you age as much or you might experience it more when you're younger or older. It just depends on the person, like the real individual here. I just don't think we can generalize like – especially monogamous love. You're talking about two real consciousnesses coming together to form a union, not to be so romantic about it. But like you're talking about something that's quite important and you're it's very specific. Like I believe you are all very real individuals. So like to generalize how you're going to be compatible, I think is 
just a mess, right? Like, so I'm worried about that a little bit. I mean, I mean, sure, but I, I, I don't know if I like. I, I understand where you're coming from, and I will absolutely agree that relationships are fundamentally unique. But like, there's also a lot of framework that we do share in common, right? There are a lot of like general pieces of advice that you will give to people that will, generally speaking, result in like a net positive rather than a net negative in like most of the cases if we go by laws of averages. Yeah. Like, I understand that everyone's I mean, like yes. their, their own version of a lunatic, but like generally speaking, we can give it like some level of advice that is probably going to be a net positive to pretty much everyone who hears that advice like don't don't be gay you have more partners options if you're not gay i mean that's one piece of advice you could do but like i don't i don't think that that's like like a healthy way to look at the world there are enough people that you i think that you can find people and i think a lot of people are actually not the way that they're pretending to be and they're forcing themselves into this net um general like like uh, we're and they're all like not even feeling it um and, and so 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 we need to I, I, like just allowing yourself to like look for people who actually want a relationship that looks the way that a relation not not like be the perfect person or anything i'm just saying having the certain type of communication that you need or something like that that if that's important to you then then just look for it you don't need to compromise on those types of things that are important like values i mean yeah of course but like the, the, that that assumes that like as soon as you found a person as such then like you will not need to compromise on it because you found them but like in reality people are infinitely more complicated and like britney said earlier to a certain extent a lot of people like are strangers until you get together you might find someone yeah, but, you find yourself comfortable with and then you'll have to like you'll have to compromise on some values either way no you don't compromise yeah, 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 on values like, ever like, you know the thing is it's like you like even if we're gonna go with like the slight amounts of compromise like if it's a deal breaker that the person isn't jealous like i uh for instance here's one uh a lot of women that i've been with do this like my man thing as like a way to go ahead and refer to me and i feel like that okay. becomes like a weird possessiveness that like kind of objectifies me and i don't mm -hmm. like that um it's just weird it's i i realized it uh and it actually grosses me out when people mm. say it um, and I've never been able to explain it. Like, that's how far abstracted from jealousy that I'm going to be with that. Um, and I do think that it's like, yeah, like I have a lot of, most of my friends in real life are women that more or less have been cheering me on to like, do the whole, like be normal and do the relationship thing. But like, yeah, I think I fundamentally just because I don't have that, I can't make a relationship. I think. And, that, and like, if it's, if, if it's a deal breaker, breaker, then like that's super I fair. Yeah, like I don't think you, you should act, like, I think you need it for a relationship to work right you have to have possessiveness and i think possessiveness leads to jealousy i think that's you know you can be like possessed like i would say i'm friends with smith there is some level of possessiveness in me saying that because i'm going ahead and conferring like an idea do i agree with everything smith says god no but the thing is there's <laughs> still like some level of possessiveness when it's like my friend smith we have like this is outside of like i'm not trying to come on to smith um but like you know outside of even just that right like there is some possessiveness that's there when you take possess possession outside of romantic context and there is like you know an as above so below bullshit like hermetic thing that you could like just draw to it where it's like hey how is it that we can look at formats outside of like the sexual barriers which tends to like inflame stuff and then look at like actual friendships and the rest of that because that's like about as much possessiveness as i possibly could deal with and that's as you much can do it willing, but there's they're out there you just you're just not looking in the right place oh, no, i just yeah i have no value to it i don't gain anything from being in a relationship that i don't already really have available to and me. also you may not meet them in this lifetime right like we're not guaranteed to meet that person they're on the planet but like whether or not you meet them like I mean, who it, cares you you could be you could be making like arguments if like with the lifetime i don't know if you go through like full reincarnation or if you're like exit the wheel of samsara mm. and shit like that like i have like the idea that i think that uh if you're going through like the Sam sort of thing, it pretty much gets to the end where or you get through like all your lifetimes and you're supposed to have one where you just do it on your own. And that's like mm -hmm. the other possibility, but that's like, if we get into like weird occult shit. So I just, I just had a brain like explosion of like, like, wow, I'm a genius. Like there, there could be a self-fulfilling prophecy type effect here where, mm -hmm. and this is really stupid. This is like, a, like a, a dude weed or whatever. Like I'm, I'm not high or anything, but like, um, like if if I say to you live, um, well, the, where you should look is you should go with a fat life. Maybe that might not be true, but if enough people hear it and then keep repeating it, then it will be true because those people will go to like so. I don't know. It's just go like, to go go to. A, I don't know where where should you go to meet these. 
Yeah, I mean, for me, like, I mean, I have no idea, but it's just, I already have, like, so much fulfillment with everything else that it's just, like, yeah, I just, get, I honestly, I get mad yeah. at my friends for, like, even suggesting need... it at this point. Like, I just don't have that need, you know? Resi. What's up? Uh, I'm curious. You said that, um, like, the whole my man thing. Um, yeah. So I just want to say, like, you're not alone. That really weirds me out, too, whenever I hear that. It's just something that I've sort of, like, grown to, like, put in the back of my mind because it's, it's yeah, weird and it's creepy to me, me but I understand me, how everybody else feels about it. So yeah. I just kind of like I've learned to deal with it. So you're not mm -hmm. alone in that. But I'm curious, what kind of labels do you think feel not possessive and don't encourage like, you know, these kinds of other things that come along with being possessive to you? Do you just like just only like use a, names or what? Yeah, just like a well, like a statement of the relationship. I think like it's like my partner is about as far as I can go with anyone that I'm with. Um, you don't have like pet names or nothing? I mean, yeah, but that's not, like, possessive. That's not something, like, I'm, like, outside of it. Like, I call pretty much everybody, it's, like, babe, bubs. Like, eventually it gets to that. Like, mo okay. most people that I talk to normally get dear and sweetheart. I think I've sweetheart you before, Drazi, even. Um, most <laughs> people I talk to normally get that. Uh, and then, yeah, my uh, Welsh grandfather kind of leveled me up from, like, that to understand that I could eventually go to babe. And then I've gone a step further from that, which is bubs, which is, like, also, like, some conferring of, like, uh, I don't know protection, I guess, but like that's as close as like I would get with that. But it's like not. Well, that other, other than sweetheart as well, I don't. You you don't really. You wouldn't really in public, right? Like to other people, refer to your partner by like the pet name, right? Like I mean, it could be like you could be drunk and be like my darling. She makes me feel whatever. If you're yeah, like, but like, I I don't know. White and poetic, you know. Yeah, I, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose that that is true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess I yeah. guess with Darling, I just wouldn't have thought of that as like the. Uh, I mean, as there's like a pet like, name per you se. Could, like, you could literally like you if you do it right and you do it well, like you can make anything sound much more convincing. You know. I mean, yeah, uh, sure, bitch, but I can't imagine my girlfriend like introducing <laughs> me to her mates as like, yeah, this guy right over there, Milf Hunter Anal Tornado sixty nine. He's like, he's here with me. Like, I, I think yeah. some pet names <laughs> are supposed to stay in the bedroom. You know. The the smile that your anime face made when you said that was pretty great. Chris, can I ask, like, why when you because I get really confused when people say you compromise on values because that doesn't make sense to me. Right. Like values are fundamental beliefs of value, morals, like ethics, like right, like your relationship with those two things, whether it's within yourself or how you feel about society, but like they're about your how you view the world. So when you say you're willing to compromise on values, do you mean like literally if your partner's a Nazi, you're like, cool, I'll compromise on that. Or like, what does that mean? Right. When you're compromising. Well, I don't know. Have, what you, have your morals or ethics shifted over the years? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, and have you like have you engaged over like a long period of time with other people whose morals and ethics have shifted as well? Uh, yes, but I come from a world where eventually you kind of stop, like your ethics and values, and your you really solidify them. You don't keep changing. I, I would, I, I mean, I would even agree with that. Although I, I am far from being at that point. But at the same time, like I don't think I could date like an actual Nazi. But mm. also, like as a as a white bold guy. That is very rare that like I'm gonna find a woman in like my vicinity that's gonna be a Nazi. That would like usually be the okay. white territory. As a white here. bald guy? Yeah, <laughs> dude. I would be like, the Nazi I feel like that's like the demo, like, what do you my mean? man. That's literally nah, a demo. Nah, yeah, but it's the dudes. It's like the Yeah, but it's the dudes, not the women. How many skinhead women Nazis do you know, Rezzy? <laughs> I'm saying that you have the skin you have skinhead phrenology if you're a bald white guy. Sure, but like even then, like mm -hmm. Even skinheads are usually not with like actual Nazis. They might be Nazis and their partners are like, oh yeah, you know, I love the gangster side of him, but like they're not actual <laughs> Nazis. So wait, I can you give me an example Chris. of like a value that you would compromise on, Chris? I'm sorry, Zardas. I just want to know like, what oh, is okay. a value you would compromise on? Uh, I have a question yeah, I too. think religion would be one that I would absolutely mm. like, I would absolutely compromise. So like, I, I actually, I do that to a certain extent in real life. So like me and my partner, we, we deal with a lot of things differently. So like, um, jealousy is, is one of those things. And like that, that will tap into where, where we're going with this. So I tend to talk openly and have like a healthy channel of communication. So like generally speaking, I'm pretty good at it. So I can convey my feelings in like a way that doesn't make her feel like shit or make her feel like I'm blaming her. So like at the same time, when it comes to things like religion, for instance, I am not a religious person at all. My girlfriend is, but like I have no issue going to the church with her. I have no issue taking part in like the sacraments with her. I have no issue in the fact that she wants to have a church wedding, right? All of those things, like it's, well, I would say to a certain extent, maybe that's because like I'm not anti-religion as a value, right? Like maybe if I was, it would be different. But generally speaking, like there will always be 
values that aren't quite um, matching. And like, I'm okay with that. Yeah, well, if you're not, if you're neutral to religion, is it a value, right? Like, I'm not sure. When I say value, I mean like, <clears throat> I do think like I'm, I grew up pretty religious. I'm pretty anti-religious for myself and my marriage. Like if my partner and I ever switched into religion, we'd both like go see a therapist to make sure we haven't gone crazy because it's very much not something we want in our relationship, you know? Mm, I know, I, I know what you're saying, but in that case, I'm starting to wonder if I like bump into people on a daily basis because like life values would be so fundamentally different that like that would actually be challenged because like I, I don't really know that many people who would be like vehemently opposed to my belief system, for instance. Um, that being said, if there was like a, a, if I was single and there was like a really hot Nazi chick, I think I could fix her. <laughs> I think, I think I could date, a, I'm not Jewish, that makes it really easy, but I think I could date a Nazi if their Naziness was like totally kept to themselves. <laughs> and, and, but like, like Jewish friends, it would get weird, right? Um, but like, what, what if it, I, I don't know. know. I like having adversarial in bedroom, you know? relationships. I don't think it's, no, I don't think I could. So she's like, hey, babe, can you just like not talk about genocide when we're out of the house? How does that work? Yeah, like, well, if, can if, you, can if you imagine, her can values... you imagine, no, can you, can you imagine hate fucking and be like, but how many of them really died in Auschwitz? You know, like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh God. I'm just saying, if her I values don't, too, like, you guys, <laughs> let's just be careful. It's fine. If her values don't like make me undermine my values, it's if it's like, you know, like, like, I don't think you, I think you can, like, that's obviously an extreme example. It's weird. Like, but like, I think that you can date people that have totally opposed values if you're comfortable having that, that, um, that conflict exist and never be resolved. But like, like it, my values is not, not going to interact with your values. We agree that we are different. It's okay. Yeah, I, I think that some couples have, like when I was growing up, there was like this infamous political couple and one was a Republican and one was a Democrat. And I was like, oh my gosh, how do they make it work? But truthfully, like I just could not. I tried it and I honestly, it drove me insane because it felt like almost embarrassing for my partner to hold beliefs. I was like, this does not reflect me. And it felt like I wanted to be like, I'm not with him. And so I realized like I really need somebody who reassures me that we're on the same page here. So we're going to treat people the same. We're going to treat the gays the same and the blacks the same and the kids the same and the religious yeah, the same. Like, yeah. yeah I don't that, want that, to be, that makes sense. I don't want to be yeah. going out for drinks with some chick that just screamed the end. I was, yeah, I yeah. was, I was literally well, just straight up, to say I'm that. Out. Yeah, like, I'm not. I'm I was, not yeah, that. I was, like, I was just know, thinking like, about that as well. And I'm sorry, like, like I think yeah, that would be a place where it would. Yeah, you have yeah, to be yeah. very, very with some of the things that some of like neo Nazis believe today, and depends on like the type of neo Nazi, right? But you kind of have to be pretty disconnected from reality, right? So like, if it's the type that is like logging onto Twitter and searching Jewish in in the fucking search bar, and then and finding <laughs> anything related to Jew Jewish and writing, you know, I don't like these people because they, you know, do this, uh, and they're part of a you know ring of people, and they, you know, like that. These are like just straight up, like some of these people are really, really like fucking ill, you know, like there's something wrong in their brains. I need a partner who is who who is like connected to reality so i could not <laughs> i could not yeah uh, that, that, that makes sense yeah. that, that's the thing that i was wondering about earlier because right now if i'm thinking about like just just the just the economic reality itself of life like i don't know of many like alt-right people or like neo-nazis who are like functional in their day-to-day -day lives and like shit's fucking expensive out there if i'm getting in a relationship you're doing a nine to five like i don't i'm not fucking hosting rent on my own i can't afford that shit it's like I, I feel um, like I would a lot of them like have miss jobs. out on a lot of people. Uh, yeah, a lot of them have jobs or have found jobs where it's like not really threatened or or you know if they're if they're like you know far right and they're online generally they're anonymous for a reason right um and so uh so that's not really too much of an issue as much as like do does your worldview align with this person's because it at a cert at a certain point it is so radically different it's just incompatible you know if this person thinks that all jewish people are pdf files and you know and and that like they're you know drinking the blood of children like this is a very very radically different you know uh worldview so yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, are, I would agree. we are fundamentally judged by the company that we keep. Like, we can't yeah. like absc abscond ourselves well, from the way that people view us. Like, yeah, this is absolutely right. right yeah, so I've met. And we're I've gonna met, go to the next one. I've met like like racist people that like don't like treat people different. They just like they believe people are different, but they don't like. But like, so so I don't I don't know like. 
I, I I feel like I can picture it, but like you guys, like if they're actually treating people different, then that's obviously like actually going to yeah, affect my life, you know. It, that, so I think the issue here is like what what you're thinking of as a Nazi, Smith is like not really a Nazi, right? Like it, you know, like they call themselves. Okay, Nazis, I did not bring though. up. I did, guys. Nazis are stupid. We didn't. I did not mean to bring them up like in this way. Like we don't need to sit here and glorify them. But like even racist people, like I'm sorry, like. <laughs> like people move in subconscious. Like no matter how much you want to say it, like you're biased. Everyone's biased, and it shows. Okay, Everybody's so I don't know. If, yeah, like I don't know if you can treat people differently when you like have a really core belief. But anyways, just I didn't mean to bring up Nazis like that. Okay, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, I mean, I think in I all fairness, it. it's my well, fault. I had a panel about jealousy. You can't have a panel about jealousy without bringing up Nazis. Uh, <laughs> yeah, all right, the, Chris, uh, go ahead, just, and then I'm gonna yeah, go to the next um, question. Just, just specifically about, just uh, specifically about what you were asking about, like the, like the responses to jealousy and all of that. So, like I said, I usually do, I deal with my jealousy through like communication, but then like I am also. Like I have historically struggled with jealousy. So obviously like I have my own ways of dealing with it. But so like the interesting thing to me, and I wonder how other guys on the panel feel about like if you've had a situation like this, but it's like my girlfriend on the other hand, she's way more secure as a, as like a person and her way of showing jealousy is like usually a lot snappier and a lot more physical, not in the sense that like she batters me, but like she'll move in closer to me. She will like grab me by. Guys, am I frozen? Oh no. Oh no. Do 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 am I back? Am I back? Am I back? Am I back? I absolutely froze, didn't I? It's where they felt jealous, I would be like upset back, right? like i don't want it in that con i want it in a, in a like a you know yeah not not yeah but it's just you, you, that would never happen only in the context of jealousy right like that relationship is fucked at that okay, point um okay i'm gonna go to the next question but to what you just said chris uh since we didn't have a whole lot of uh uh variation to answers to you I, i'll i'll tell you that um although i don't experience jealousy I once had an ex who my friend, my friend said something to me and she like jumped into my arms. She was like, no, mine. I was like, that was pretty cool. That was like a nice, like little ego boost, even though like, I don't feel jealousy. Like that was kind of cool. Or like, I feel very low levels of jealousy. Like I, it made me feel good about myself. And that's kind of confusing to me. So like, I can at least uh, agree with you there. Um, so the, the last, the last uh, topic uh, of this evening, um, I didn't have anything else until uh, Smeth agreed. Uh, I I just want to let Smeth talk about his frustrations with people's uh, retaliations about jealousy. And because uh, I, I wanted to argue Smeth really bad about this, but um, I don't think that I, I could. And I really want to hear what Smeth has to say about these things. So um, if you can articulate the kind of thing you've been talking about, uh, I'd be really curious because um, I think I think I'm way too uh, empathetic and understanding to where you're coming from to really vent my frustrations with some of, some of the things that you say. Like I'll just keep backing down. So I wanted to bring this uh, subject out of the panel. Well, it's not really jealousy. I think jealousy is just an excuse. People just yeah. want to um, like people you... want to hate people and they want to like watch people suffer and like 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 so. I was I was doing this on like Twitter. I mean, this is I'm having these conversations like on Twitter and shit. But like, if if like there will be people posting videos of like like fights and stuff, and I follow accounts like that, and there will be one where like somebody is like attacking someone, and then a bunch of people rush in and they beat the crap out of them, and they don't stop. And I'm like, they took it too far. And everybody's like, no, they didn't take it far enough. They should. And like everybody's just so angry that I, that like they they're, they need to let me know that they that this person needed even more. They're they're lucky like they didn't get in the hospital. They and then I think if you feel like people just need to like fantasize about like hurting people and so jealousy is one of one of these such excuses that what people will use so someone cheats and stuff and then uh like someone does something bad to someone who cheats and then everybody's like oh they did the right thing that they, they, they this is how we change society they learned their lesson 
um, it, it's it's just an excuse for people to to fantasize about hurting people. I agree with this actually. I talked about this the other day. I think the greatest sign of dysfunction is like let's say you're cheated on, and after the relationship ends, you like stalk your whoever cheated on you, and you're like, I hope they ended up in a worse relationship. Or I hope they're worse off. It's like no, dude. I hope the person that I loved who cheated on me got better. Like I hope people get better, but I do think there's a really dysfunctional part of us that do, like they we do we're kind of like sadistic, and I don't even and that's a feeling that I think that therapy really helps, right? Or that's a feeling that I think you know introspection really helps is to ask yourself like, dude, okay, like yes, it's awful, like trust me, like it's the worst, but also like okay, humans are gonna human relax, and also you can't like it's not a part of my values to hurt a person just because they cheated on me. So that's why I wouldn't do it. Like you know the Carrie Underwood song where she slashes his tires. Everybody knows the song, you know, because he cheats. You know, country song. Okay, maybe you don't. No one's nodding, but okay, I Carrie Underwood. Unfortunately, I know, I know it. Sorry. Okay, no problem. I can imagine it. So like next time, maybe he'll think before he cheats. Is kind of like the line. Is she like slashes his tires and then kills his car and like all these things? And look powerhouse song love it girl boss slash gaslight like love it okay but also like not like not ethical like you can't do that like not within values right like i wouldn't do that again i don't think it's justified but i think the feeling of wanting to do it is so human and it takes a really disciplined person not to act on that feeling and i think that's what we should aim for is like it's not that the feelings are wrong because i get it like sometimes you feel like i want to take justice into my hands but genuinely it would do you better and them better if you just move on let it go yeah, that's why I follow these accounts. Tires is a good move, so. right? Like there, but the thing is, <laughs> like, it's not because of the rest of it. The actual problem is that somebody committed violence against the property of another person to, and attempt to cause them harm. That doesn't have to do necessarily with jealousy. I think, like, yeah, we already have a system of laws built up to prevent that. Not to you know say that that isn't why we have them that might be why we have those laws to codify and like prevent negative societal consequences but um yeah i just think that it's like i think that's even separate from jealousy that goes into the um i even forget i even forget it now i was talking about it earlier uh resentment right mm -hmm. where i think like yeah once you get into resentment but resentment and jealousy resentment can result from jealousy but i don't think it's the same as jealousy yeah it's definitely uh, different i, I would agree with that right yeah. like that bitterness yeah. that revenge that like just like mm -hmm. i'm gonna take justice into my own yeah. hands like you know what i mean absolutely yeah because there's no way to get justice because like if you can't have your love requited yeah like guess what you gotta like learn to just take and bite that bullet and accept your life because uh yeah, that can feel absolutely terrible uh, as a person. Like, I've experienced that. It's probably why I'm, like, against it at this point. Where I'm just like, yeah, just, you know, whatever. I have other shit to do, so... Yeah, I mean, um, obviously having like a really vitriolic reaction to it or like a really pathological reaction like that, that would be really, really unwise, right? Unadvised even. Like, that's not something that we should encourage or cheer on. But at the same time, like... If I was cheated on, like, I'm not going to trip you so you fall down the stairs. But if I found out you've fallen down the stairs, like, it's not me who needs fixing here, okay? Like, fuck you. I will laugh at your scraped knee because you've fallen down the stairs. I'm just not going to be the one pushing you. Like, yeah, there's just like, a lot like, of human experience with that. I, I, I don't guess... think you, can, you can't tell people not to feel that way. Because, like, I feel that. But that's why I fucking watch. That's why I follow these accounts on Twitter that post fights. Because I love seeing someone do something fucked up and then get punched in the face. Um, but like, it doesn't mean it's okay. Oh, there's a really good like, one. There's, there's a one on Twitter. I'll send you later. Um, yeah, I, I just that's... want to clarify my contention with what Smith Smith has said. Uh, so the, the thing that I guess I want to try to address is that I don't necessarily disagree that you should not retaliate, especially not violently against people. However, do you think that there's a part of people that we give some kind of wiggle room to say that, like, while what you're doing isn't the best, like? It is understandable that if it uh, potentially the worst uh, thing that's ever happened to you is you getting cheated on or something similar, that you're going to have an uncharacteristically bad response to this. Do we give any credit to these people, especially when things like social media have been known to uh, encourage people and back them up and say, like, uh, like if, if a woman slashes a guy's tires, that there's going to be a bunch of like, you go, girls. Yeah, uh, you showed him like in the comments and stuff. Uh, when we have people that do encourage these things, can we wholly blame a person for having such strong emotional reactions when there are some rewards for it? Do, not do like you know a, how like sometimes a, not like, as like a soul level thing, but at the end of the day, I'm not. Britain seven, for your knock it off. Disorder, 
right? And if you go ahead, I will and mute both of you, but especially you, Brent, externally. since I don't know you. We can judge, but I know action. seven. Yeah, we have to remember that this is something that you did. Knock right? it off. Does it obscure all blame? No, like you just, yeah, you had a overall like you know bad reaction. Maybe in the future reconsider what we do when you have a breakup if you're slashing somebody's tires you don't get to be absolved of blame of like you going ahead and giving in fully to a rationality and if you if at the very least we need to go ahead and do something to make sure that you're not doing that because obviously there is like a broken part there that we probably need therapy uh that yeah. needs to just be rectified there, yeah, there's it's something like you, you can you say can that do... something can be explained but not excused and yeah, like i can understand why you did something but that doesn't mean that like you get a pass on doing that right and especially if your way like if your direct behavior after a breakup ends up like harming you even more then like it's obvious like it's massively unhealthy right and like you you, can't, you shouldn't be doing that shit. can i ask a question yeah, yeah. um if you want to finish what you're saying first smith and then i'll ask I'm just gonna say, like, there's something that you can probably do that are really like, th like you can, like, strap a bomb to people that I love or something, and then I'm gonna be willing to do horrible things to you, like, like you know. But it doesn't, like, it, like. Yeah, if you're in a saw game, absolutely. But... Yeah, you get, like, <laughs> yeah, the I whole mean... fucking thing gets thrown out the window when you're putting a jigsaw puzzle, Smith. Yes. Wait, what? what this do, is do, do you mean that here. you no longer go by like Marxist-Leninist praxis when you're in a saw game? Fucking disappointed right. in you, no, Razzy. Okay, all right. I'm Can sorry. I've watched question? enough of these things. I want to say on jealousy just really fast because my audience is like, is this it? Like, no, I think, look, jealousy is a very complicated issue and it will happen in your life. It will happen between parents and children. It will happen between siblings. It will happen between students and teachers. It will happen because you will have anxiety and worry and trauma. So don't worry about it happening. Worry about doing nothing about it because that's really when things go wrong. It's not wrong to experience it, like Tom was saying, but I do think it's kind of like not in your best interest to not engage with it or try to get better, but you can do whatever you want to do. Um, okay. so I, I would say you try, you should try to figure out why, figure out why, and like, so so if the if the thing that you're afraid of, it, how what's the likelihood of that actually happening, and, and how in touch with your surroundings are you? Um, I, I would gonna... say. I'm gonna um, so go to let you guys you... give your closings. Uh, hi, <laughs> anyways, uh, resident closing <laughs> statements. Um, yeah, I think all emotions are valid. Doesn't mean that the way that we handle those emotions is a good thing. I think it's bad for a lot of us. I think a lot of us agree on what jealousy means. I think jealousy is a fundament to relationships and it's something we're all going to experience. It's not bad. You should engage with it. Tell your partners about it. Find a way to love them the way that you need to love them. And make sure you don't lie about things in relationships because that will ruin them as well. So, uh, signing off, we're gonna, I'm going to end this with, uh, yeah, I am not jealous of anything mostly uh other than professionally uh maybe that's envy maybe i am thinking about this a little bit too little uh but at the end of the day i feel pretty good about life and uh i'm resver nice to meet you all again thank you resi um i wanted to say before i went to closing statements i really appreciate you guys coming on here because um really the whole idea is, is pretty pretty damn alien to me uh so i'm polyamorous i don't ever like like uh uh, what's the, I don't I don't use possessive labels or anything. I always say my wife isn't my one and only, but she's my one that's always like I know she's always going to be there. Uh, but I never like want to like put her in like a box and say like this just belongs to me. She's my thing. Uh, and I think that you guys have said a lot of stuff that I haven't heard. Like usually the way that people try to explain this to me is always with this super possessive language. And you guys have really helped me uh, come a lot further in my understanding from where I was at. And that's really meaningful for me. I'm, that's why I picked the people that I picked tonight. Um, Reservoir, you did an amazing job of, you're the one person who I was like, I need him on here for this specific reason. And when things got like a little too wacky, you were like, hold on, let's just bring it right back. You were perfect for that. I just want to say thank you. Because there was a moment where I was like, you nailed it. You nailed exactly what I had I you here for. I definitely went ahead and like, Hydroplaned <laughs> us into the can we shove penis into butthole debate, but I will but, take the but that was us. but that was fun, uh, and we were getting close to the end, so it was nice to spice it up a bit. Um, sure. so yeah, I just I just wanted to thank you guys before uh before going to closing statements because this one was like really it was for me to get a better understanding. Um, I'm gonna go uh top to bottom, left to right order for closing statements. Uh, Brittany Simon, we've never met before. It was really nice to meet you. 
you're an absolute delight. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having me. I had a lot of fun. I'm, I'm just getting used to panels. So I've been on the internet a long time, but panels give me like usually anxiety, but I felt pretty relaxed in this one. So that was really nice. Um, I want to say there's like two ways I think of jealousy. The reason I can love it is that it gives me an opportunity for communication. And the reason I hate it is sometimes it stifles communication. So I have this focus of wanting to encourage communication. And that starts with creating a safe space for your partner to even be jealous in the first place. I do think there's a part of society that might encourage it in like toxic music. But in other parts where I was where I've come up in, you're actually kind of looked down on for feeling those feelings. And so I just want to encourage people to like create a safe space for their partners or their family or their friends or their siblings to say, hey, I think I'm like jealous and I'm afraid and I'm anxious and I just want to be reassured. And I also want to work on this if I need more than just reassurance, right? Because I think jealousy is a spectrum from like slight reassurance needing to I need to talk to a professional because now I'm looping, right? So don't be afraid to admit you're jealous because honestly, it's just an emotion. It comes and goes, right? It's not the end of the world. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brittany. Uh, Chris, uh, I know I know that you moved a lot of stuff to be here, uh, be here tonight. I really appreciate it. Go ahead and uh, send us off. To, oh, and uh, to let us know where to find you. Uh, yeah, sure. I think I will more or less just repeat my opening statement and add a few bits and bobs to it. So um, jealousy can come from two places, right? One of them being insecurity, another being just like your regular normal emotion. You want less of that first one, you want that second one under control, and you want to build yourself up as like a healthier and stronger individual so you feel less insecure and then you can have a better time in general, right? Jealousy is way the fuck more complex than what you can get into on a six person panel. I'm here to mostly just enjoy the back and forth and open up networking opportunities and to remind everyone to always take online relationship advice with a grain of salt. Um, it's 3 a.m. over here. I have work in six hours. I wish to go to sleep. And uh, yeah, my name is Chris. I go by Chris Speaks Everywhere. Chris is spelled K-R-Y-S. I tend to talk about relationships, sexual kinks, and all sorts of really flavor of the week, social happening slash drama. So yeah. Oh, and talk to your partners. They're also human beings. You'll be fine. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, Rezzy, you gave one, but if you want to um, redo it, feel free. Go on. No, all no, right. Yep. Smith. Uh, jealousy sucks when we experience it for other people. It sucks when we experience it ourselves, but we're always probably going to have it in some t context. So I think you just have to be comfortable talking about it and think about, I, I think you should think about why and, uh, try to like the most healthy conversation. If you're experiencing it is talking about it with your partner about like, well, what is it about this thing that's making me jealous? What is it about you talking to your mom that makes me like, fucking have a meltdown um and that's uh if, if you have that conversation you you can't be doing too much wrong that's really nice smith uh thanks uh where to find you real smith on youtube okay now well, it's it's the same on twitter too uh yeah uh all right smith thank you very much stardust thank you for being here i appreciate you always uh Give us your closing statements and uh, let us know where to find you. Yeah, um, I'm Stardust. You can find all of my links um, at stardust.rip or stardust.rip. Um, and uh, yeah, um, you know, jealousy, natural thing uh, to experience. Um, uh, once again, you know, um, work through it if you can. Um, and uh, if you need help, reach out to a professional if you need help. If it's a reasonable, you know, concern, then obviously, you know, work through it with your partner or with whoever is is making you feel that way. And um, yeah, I think just being open and acknowledging your negative feelings is, is a good step. Um, uh, again, take it from somebody who is very, you know, I always avoided jealousy um, or the feeling of jealousy or even the feeling of envy. Um, because I just, um, I was so put off by it. Um, it is, it's better to talk about it and be open about it, even if you feel like you're being a crazy person. So, and also, uh, you know, I am disgusted with males, um, <laughs> for putting their penises in their butts. Um, but yeah, if I cover current events, uh, and, and drama and, you know, I'm kind of a variety streamer. Um, so if you like, you know, that kind of stuff, check it out. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just feel bad because I forgot to say it when it was Brittany. Brittany, how can we find you? Oh, um, Brittany Simon on YouTube. Like, that's it. Yay. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
thanks you guys for coming. Uh, I'm going to try to put one of these together uh, every week. I'm not married to the time, but uh, for now it's Thursdays at 630. I really appreciate you guys being on. And um, yeah, that's it. This was cool. All right. Thanks this for having solid. me. Thank you. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Nice Take to care, everyone. See everyone. Night -night. Okay. Good, good night. Good night, Chris. Good night. I have to do this. Here I am. Hello. It is also 3 a.m. where I am. So I need to go to bed. How is everybody tonight? Well, that was interesting. I'm glad we could do it. I um, It, is, it really is 3 a.m. here. I got to go to bed. Um, good times, you know? Jealousy is hard. I, I don't want you guys to feel too bad if you feel it. I want you to know it's normal. I also think it does come from a place of insecurity. And I think that's fair. I think humans are insecure. And I don't think it's wrong to be insecure. I think it might be wrong to... I think it might be wrong to neglect insecurity as it can fester into something really unhealthy. You know what I mean? In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. Sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool. Dun, 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 dun.